Hello there everyone, it's Brian Cockrell on my YouTube channel. I'm with John Wedgett today. I'm gonna to let this man explain what he's what he's gonna be talking about today. It's gonna to blow your mind. He's an ex-police officer, 30 year, and you know I don't talk to police, but I've talked to this <laughs> man, he needs an OBE, what he's doing. Oh. I'll just hand you over to John now and let him explain his credentials and what he's about. Thank you so much, you're Brian. So Thank welcome. you for having me. You're, you're welcome. You know, and they've made me a brew. I always I, I do my podcast, brew with a view, always have a cup yeah. of tea and a and a chat. Well, um, I was invited up here, um, Brian got in touch, and this network has formulated, which is, I think is incredible, and it's people with, with a common goal, and a common goal is, we don't like child abuse. No, not at all. Uh, and it, it's like glue, it's brought us together, you yeah, know, yeah. and it has, and the other thing is, you know, we're, we're all people of God, we believe that God wants us all to get together to stop this, so. That's true. Yeah. My background, what, what sort of brings me to this place, is that uh, um, I'm a retired police detective. Um, I retired with a 27 and a half year pension, uh, but I was also a whistleblower. Right. Um, because my specialization, Brian, was I um, become a detective quite early. Right. Because uh, uh, I just didn't like wearing uniform, to be honest. <laughs> you know? yeah. um, and then I just sort of morphed. I used to look like the detectives, how they worked on their own. Mm. And, it, and um, a strange thing is, I just tell you why I whistle blew and then I'll go back to the beginning if I may because it ties in a bit with some of the stuff I've heard you say in the past yes. and something we was mentioning earlier. Um, I, I blew the whistle um, and, and made allegation of corruption in 2014 against very, very senior UK officers um, for the cover up of child prostitution. Yeah, um, which I think is very brave to come up with, yeah. Well, instead of investigating um, these officers, they investigated me, and I spent yeah. nearly a three and a half year campaign subject to a bullying campaign. I was yeah. under surveillance for a year and a half, nine attempts to imprison me. I brought four kids of my own. They, they tried to, I was threatened with the loss of my home, my job, and my children if I spoke out about what I'd, I'd found out and what I knew about child prostitution and the cover ups. I now know so much more, mm. having done what I do now, um, but I did, I nearly lost my home because uh, they never paid me for three years. Yeah. I ended up working on building sites to pay my mortgage. Um, the bank, it was only because someone from the bank came round and, and had a heart, said right. we won't take your home off you. So basically they treated like a criminal. That, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was horrendous yeah. what they did. I yeah. mean, the lies they put together. Yeah. I remember saying to one of my friends, if they can do it to me, you think if you're not a cop or what they can yeah. do. Yeah. Um, while one of my kids was, I'll go into it in a bit more detail, one of my kids was dying in hospital. Um, I came home, um, he was he was in intensive care, he'd actually been dead for about 10 minutes. He did survive, yes. and, and this will be what That's brought me a God, and I want to mention that. Yes. Um, I came home and I was arrested for, for child abandonment, child neglect, um, and then there was nine cases to the CPS to put me in prison. Amazing. You know, um, But you know, I fought back, I now campaign solidly for justice for victims and survivors of abuse. Brilliant. And protection of police whistleblowers. I started doing it with um, an ex, what well, say, an ex criminal. He'd, he'd been in the institutions all his life, yes. um, called Bill Maloney, a tough right. guy. Right. Um, you know, hard man from London, and he um, teamed up with myself. He had um, a production company called Pie Mash Films, and they did a, a fantastic um, documentary about Hope to Live Kids Home. And then from there, I basically went on my own and I've just using the, the medium of um, social media to get my story out. And yes. then I started working with Chris Lambriano, the ex-Craig guy. Fantastic bloke, yeah. Oh man, what, it just he, it just makes me smile even when I think of yeah, the guy, you know? He's a wonderful man. <laughs> you know I, mean? he's, yeah. I call him Uncle Chris. And from there, Chris in, introduced me to this ex-con sort of community. Yeah. But we, we were all coming from, I mean, there's a few people that I've got no interest in associating with because they're still yeah. active in what they do. Yeah. That's their oh, life, yeah, and I'm yeah. not no interest in that. But there's some, that, you know, yeah. like yourself and Terry and We've changed our life to Christianity, oh, my wife and I, and so. Turn that off. It's phenomenal, isn't it? Turn that off does away. Picture, he just does exist. And, and, and our enemy is the devil, and, and the devil hurts the kids, yeah. you know. And what men are we if we allow that to happen? And the greatest thing the devil ever achieved was letting people think he didn't exist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And hopefully, um, I can uh, I can shed a bit more light on that and, and prove that yes. this is live and well when he's he's active. Wasn't he off this? It's really yeah. good. Good. Well, and so what happened was I I joined the police and I can remember my, I was in a rough part of London, South East London, beginning of the nineties. There was a lot of heroin and crack cocaine about, and yeah. the police's attitude back then I, when I joined it was class of discipline service. It was very military run. 
Right. They say it's a civilian police force, but it was all run by ex-servicemen. Yeah. Guardsmen would take you for marching, and the mm. PT staff were in the army, and and the structure was very disciplined, and and there was a very much a them and us situation. Right. So when you went out, got sent out, dispatched out, it, it was a bit like a call to war. You know what I mean? Yes. Off you go. You know, and they totally divested themselves, detached themselves from the community in many ways. You know. Yeah. And I can remember there was a lad in a custody suite, and I was a jailer that night. And I went round and I used to always have a packet of cigarettes. Right. And I used to always give someone a cigarette and have a chat yeah. with them. Yeah. You know, it's just what I did. Anyway, so I um, I said, would you like a cigarette? And he would been shouting and screaming. At least give them DFs back then, you know, the yeah. Yeah. heroin substitute yeah. things and to knock them out. And I don't think they were prescribed. They used to have a packet of them and <laughs> give, them, give them a DF. Yeah. And, and I said, what's the matter, mate? And he said, oh, I'm rattling. I'm really in trouble. I'm a yeah. heroin addict. But it was the same age as me. Yeah. And I said, well, why? Why the heroin? He went, well, take me for a cigarette, I'll tell you. So he went for a cigarette and he went, if you had my life, you'd be on it. Yeah, I know where you're coming from here. Yeah. I went, what? And then it was a kid's home, the sexual abuse. Yeah. And I, I, I couldn't comprehend it. Yeah. I'm like, seriously? And he went, mate, most of the junkies you get in here, yeah. the, the smack heads, yeah. the brown heads, yeah. the crack heads, yeah. whatever the terminology, he said, yeah. they will all be the same yeah. as me, mate. Yeah, yeah. And it changed. It the totally had a yeah. change. Yeah. My career didn't change much right. from that from that thing. I still carried on, but I always remembered that. And and was I never that a catalyst to what it was. Yeah, yeah. It definitely was, Brian. And it was it was it lit the fuse really, and it stopped the judgment. Yeah, you know, there was still that battle on the street, you yeah. know, and all that. So that still went on, but it sort of took away my my, my judgment really. So from now, I then um, I just wanted to go into the CID. So. Um, yeah. I ended up uh, moving up to the West End, become a detective, yes. uh, and then my missus left me with four kids. Right. So I had them, and I thought, what am I going to do? So a job come up, and it was on uh, on the River Police, working on the boats on the yes. River Thames. Yeah. So I went there because I could I could get home for my kids. So, so the shift pattern allowed me to be at home for the kids. Yeah. I was thinking, brilliant. And they let me sleep on my nights. Um, so one of the sergeants come up and he, and he went, I mean, what are you doing here? And I went, I yeah, know, I was yeah. bored, totally bored. Yeah. There was nothing to do and it wasn't me. And, and I wanted to interact with people and they didn't. And he turned around and said, look, this stuff's come up from the home office. Yeah. There's a lot of paedophiles living on canal boats. I was like, oh, okay. He said, look, we, we run the canals. We've got governance for the canals. Look, we've had intel from the prison system that paedophiles are being released and they're living on canal boats because they haven't got to sign the sex offenders register. Oh, I see, yeah. Go and look at it, and you can yeah. basically work from home. You can leave from your own. Yeah. So I, I lived on the canal, and it led into London, so I used to cycle my bike, and my job was just to find these canal boats. Right. And find out who lived on them. So he said, look, there's two on there. If you can find two more in the next three months, we'll be happy with you. Within a month, I found 90. 90? 90 paedophiles. And they were dangerous. But in only one small part. Yeah, well, they were in clusters. Right. You know, and uh, I thought, what the hell was going on? So they sent an intelligence worker to come down with me. Right. And they did like geographical profile. And they found out that they were in certain places. And there is a reason. It's a longer story. It's a yeah. presentation in its own right. But yeah. they were a paedophile community. Yeah. But then what happened then, it started, names started coming, out, coming in. Yeah. And it started linking into people in government. Right. And it started linking into connections with police officers. It started wow. spreading into this other world. Yeah. Right. So all of a sudden I get pulled by a detective from the paedophile unit and said, Look, I need to tell you something. And he said he was at Scotland Yard and he said, If you do good in any sort of crime fighting, they love you. You know, you're yeah. the king of the heap. Yeah. You do good in this, it's the opposite. You think it would be number one, wouldn't you? Yeah, think it'd be yeah. number one. Yeah. And I was, I was like, right. He said, listen, we've had info on a home secretary twice for for raping young boys. Yeah, twice. And he said, and each time it's been shut down, it's been closed down. Yeah. And he it's said, slow. right, be very very careful. He said, because your name is being mentioned now in the corridors, and they're not happy with what you're yeah. uncovering. He said, they're probably gonna, getting to the truth, and the you're truth. getting touching on them. Yes. But but then what you start seeing then, Brian, is a conspiracy. So they yes. call people conspiracy theorists. Yes. 
And then you get people saying, hi up, they don't want me doing this. And well, where's That's the That's a word to use that you're a crackpot, isn't it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But I started seeing it then, yeah. right? And I realised that then there has been this cover up when there's been yeah. government involved in raping children. Yes. Right, so I came into work and a senior officer said, I need to have a word with you. He said, uh, we're shutting you down. I went, why? It's highly successful. It was a national thing. I was going all over the place with it. And he went, you can't carry on doing it. Um, because we can't afford to lose you, we need you back. Yeah. I went, oh come on, that's the nonsense. That they, just, they don't do anything. Just there? And then yeah. he said, look, I'm telling you now, it's come from my up. You got yeah. back down. You've, yeah. you've you've gone too too deep. Right. So you're uncovering the truth. Yeah. In the wrong places, it's, but in your right places. So this yeah. was the first time, Brian, yeah. that I realised that there was a conspiracy of silence. Yes. So I've already heard it now about Home Secretary. Yeah. Right. Um. I couldn't name him, but I don't want to. I don't want to name it on your channel because I want you to keep going, yeah, mate. Yeah, I don't want. Yeah, I don't yeah. want anyone trying to stop. They will look at any reason to shut you down. Yeah, so any excuse. Yeah, any yeah, excuse. Yeah. So you can look at my other chats. I boldly stated who this Home Secretary is, um, but I'm not. I'm not putting that on Brian on there. Um, we got to keep going, and you've always got to use your, you know, your wisdom yeah, over your yeah. mouth sometimes yeah. with this. So then I went to the vice unit. Now the vice unit was a specialist unit. Uh, Scotland Yard unit, and they were to do with prostitution, gambling, yeah, I don't know, nightclubs, and all that, you know. Yeah. And London, you know, it's got ma the majority of the casinos, some of the biggest paid casinos. Yes, yes. It's got all the, the top nightclubs, a hot, you know, and it's got yeah. a big red light area, and it's got a, yeah. a lot of corruption Massive, yeah. around the red light area, yeah. Soho, and yeah. And it had things like the meat rack, which was an area in Piccadilly where young boys were traded. It was an open secret. Um, there were young girls, you know, the rumours, the moment I started, what young girls were, were being pimped out on the street and there were prostitutes involved. In yeah. And so I went onto this unit and they sent us out to go and uh, pick up the prostitutes and basically just, just nick them so they get fined, right? Yeah. And they weren't interested in the kids. Yeah, right. the kids were cropping up on briefings, you know. Yeah. Um, I couldn't believe it. So we went out and it was basically competition. So let's see if you could nick 100 prostitutes yeah in a week then you were the top team yeah and then they'd let you have a night off and things like that right and funny enough one of the prostitutes that i used to nick she ends up working with us now she's part right. of our team she doesn't class up as a prostitute it's a clipper yeah. it's a difference but you yeah, know yeah, i mean yeah. i mean i'm just saying it for argument's sake because yeah. i don't want to insult her because she's my mate yeah but she, she said we were discussing so how many times you're on nick she went about 10 john so <laughs> i remember you yeah, but so but, you must have been all right with them because obviously you wouldn't have that bond and trust, you know. Of course, and also, yeah. you know, you know, the police are always out for intelligence. Yeah. I mean, and they are, well, they say that. It, yeah. it all runs on intelligence. It's when people go, they've had me under surveillance. No, mate, your, your mate's grasped you. Yeah. Because yeah. you've got a better car than him. Yeah, yeah. Or, or he fancied your missus, well, or yeah, your miss, yeah, yeah. your ex-missus yeah. has gone and says, and that's how people get caught. They, they get grasped on yeah, I mean, of course they do. You know, I, I remember being in a pub once. Information received is a favourite word in the world, isn't it? <laughs> it and is. it's someone, that, but the best friend or the best that was doing it. There's so much corruption. But, uh, it, yeah, it, it, it was yeah, that, that was another side of it. You know, yeah. like going about about the intel and how yeah. all that works, and that's yeah. when it gets very dark as well. Yeah. So we were out on the on the patrol one night. There's a little girl. We seen her come out. She'd come back in the bushes, but she'd been walking up and down this road. And yeah. she was 14, but she was a little girl anyway, and she was on heroin and crack. You know, 14. She looked 12. Yeah. And she's dressed to look like 12. Deliberately, yeah. Yeah, anyway, we caught her, and all of a sudden, that, the time stops because she's got to come into care now. Yeah. Because she's at risk. Yeah. She's, and that's what we should have been doing anyway. Yeah. So I took her into care, and sometimes, and we've got to be, be honest about this, some of the kids that you deal with, they're horrors. They hate mm. the old Bill. They've come from a whole lineage the, of yeah, hating yeah, the old Bill. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're on heroin as well, so yeah. want the heroin, so they're, they're not going to be nice, yeah. you know, and they're going to kick off, they're going to shout, spit, swear, and everything else. So anyway, we get her in the car, and I put up to the control, said, look, we're off the road with this young girl, and they went, get her out now. Yeah. I went, you all right? I went, get her out now. Now, bear in mind, if anyone has sex with a girl, that's statutory rape. Yeah. So they were interested in an offence which was summary only, magistrate's court only, yeah. loitering, right, which is a 20 quid fine, 50 quid fine, whatever. Yeah. Whereas there could be a 30 year sentence if yeah. someone's yeah. having sex with that girl. Yeah. And my wife goes, she's got scabies. Right. She's going to infect the car and you take her back to Nick, she'll infect the Nick. And she's a pain in the ass anyway, just get rid of her. Tell her to F off. And so we had to throw her out. 
you know, a, a 14 year I mean, honestly, she was tiny, this little girl. You know, of course, that's what they want. So that yeah. was my second look into it. And then... All, all, the, all the intel started to gather, though, wasn't it? Oh, of mental. course. Yeah, yeah. And what was happening was that there was one prostitute in particular that was procuring the girls, and they knew about her. Yeah. And they never made any attempt to go and get her. Right. And there was rumours that she was involved with a copper. She's probably one of the ones who was grassing all the ones up. Yeah, yeah well, they said, do. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. They, this is the other thing that they yeah, do, you yeah, know. Yeah. And they were frightened of she'd beat them up as yeah. well. But she had... And what they would do, the copper's when they go on vice, uh, they'd only go and arrest the pretty ones that were compliant. The right. ones that were aggressive, they didn't want to touch them. Right. You know, they'd kick off and yeah. or they'd, some would smear themselves with stuff and all that. Yeah, so they yeah, wouldn't, yeah. you know, get, we don't want to. So the, the ones that, so there was a lot of flirtation going on between the couple. You yeah. started seeing that happening quite a bit. And this girl who was running, her name was Foxy. She was very flirtatious with, yeah. with the, um, she'd been convicted. So she, that's, all, that's allowed, saying that. Yeah. But... Then one of the one little girl made an allegation that she was being pimped out. Right. So she was um, how old was she? Uh, I think she was about fourteen, but she said been going for the last two years. Mm. So they said to me, "Look, go and talk to this girl. She's a liar. She's a right pain in the ass." And they yeah. called her a scrub. So I went to this kid's Who's office. Who's this senior? Uh, it was senior officers, like, right? Well, yeah, right. well supervising officers, right. you know. Yeah. And they just put it. That she said she's made two allegations. She's a little crackhead, you know. Yeah. She's probably lying. Get rid of the case, right? Yeah. Put it in. Anyway. I went to see her and she wouldn't talk to me, right? But I had um, a little lighter and it was like a little frog. And as you pressed it, said this flame come out its mouth, right? And she went, Can I have it? And I went, Don't work like that. Yeah. Tell me what's happening. That's yours. And she went, I'll tell you everything. Yeah. I went, Really? So I passed the lighter. I said, yeah. Don't set fire to this secure unit. I mean, well, and she went and she said she told me everything. Right. And once it started, it didn't stop, you right. know. Yeah. And she was being pimped out. She was traded out. She said, I know all the places. She said, it ain't yeah. just me. Yeah. There's so many. So yeah. I said, Co But you couldn't believe it, could you? No, no. Yeah. yeah. And I said, who's doing it? So she named the girl who was doing it. She said, in the police, they, she hides us in bushes, John. And the police go by. And and she said, one day we were there. They She put us in this bush, me and another girl. And... Um, the cop car comes out, so Foxy, the main prostitute's there, yeah. goes up to the, the police car, leans in, and lets them lift her skirt up and, and lets them touch her and, and then Horrendous. blew them a kiss or whatever, kissed or whatever, and she said, they were all squeezing her, kissing her ass, and, yeah. and, and then she waved them by, and she said, we was just in the bushes and we were being pimped out. Yeah. What and does this make you feel like? Well, just well, well like you, you just can't believe it. Yeah, you know, you're yeah. sitting there thinking, well, this is like something out of it's a make film. Me, make me talk yeah. horrible, yeah. yeah. You know, and, and she said there's hotels. So she went through the whole structure. And she said there's a judge as well. There's a judge. Um, and there was someone from the BBC. Yeah. 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 Going. So, th so this had been going on, I found out, for nearly 15 years. Uh, and what really changed the police it, knew obviously no, yeah and what, like the police officers uh, and what made it worse was this little girl um she secured a prosecution the first prosecution in london f under under this legislation and she was found dead oh. shortly afterwards and, and so a lot of what i do is a memory of this uh, poor little girl that. That the be, bravery how did you yeah. bring it to tears yeah. and stuff yeah there yeah. was yardy boys involved in it in in distributing them and yeah and it totally totally said and really who's who and what's what and who's hard and who shame on them, it oh shame, shame on all of them shame on all of them yeah. it, it, it was and just all covering up shame yeah. on them and all and what it also did was it, it altered what i deem is a paedophile see everyone thinks it's like some bloke in his 50s lived with his mum with milk bottom glasses <laughs> yeah. and yeah. you know but it's not. I mean, mm. it's um, it's it's all sorts. It's all colours. It's yeah. all ages. We were getting some lads in their twenties, good-looking guys, who were yeah. having sex with these twelve-year-old girls and then passing them on to others. And, yeah, yeah. You know, and what I want to say is, we hear a lot in in the papers about Muslim grooming gangs, Muslim grooming, Muslim grooming gangs. But it's and everyone. It's everyone, everyone and yeah, everything. Yeah, and yeah. and you know, we hear about them: Rotherham, Rochdale, yeah. Bradford, Luton, that. London is the most diverse city in the world. Yeah. It's the most densely populated city in the Western world. Yes. Not one case. Not one case. No. And what we got in London, we got Parliament, we've got yeah. All, yeah. the wealth, we've got everything. So 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 what I call them as London Parliament is legalised gangsters. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's unbelievable, yeah. yeah. Who, who work with impunity. Yeah. So so what happened was that this one girl gave me another girl, gave me another girl, gave me another girl, gave me another girl. 
and it went on and on and on. We had so many um, kids involved; it was just phenomenal. Um, and Did they you get were, any convictions of these people? Well, not of the people using the kids no right, the customers right. but the one that was trading them out she did she yeah. did go away yeah. um but so you, you started seeing how it all worked this organized criminality it's how it works essentiating and you can't do nothing really even though you're trying your hardest you can't you can't put people away well, well uh, you know the fact of the matter they put all their effort and someone said to me all they'll ever do is pick lower hanging fruit yeah you know all their effort into a minor crap really yeah you know uh, some lads dealing drugs out of their mouth will get yeah. eight years yeah and yet they're trading yeah, kids. kids. And, and they're not just trading kids, they're ruining these kids. These yeah. kids have got syphilis, they've got HIV. Yeah. Yeah. They've got, I mean, one girl, she was being sent out, and you know, and, and I, I make no excuses for this, but it's not nice. She was being sent out, and, and she would actually ooze pus out of her vagina yeah. because she had cysts so big from Horrendous, yeah. infection, and she, they were just working her, working yeah, her. Yeah. One lad, he he's... Um, Anus was so sad, tall. So sad thinking, yeah. thinking about the kids. I mean, there was one little kid who did die. He died of HIV, and yeah. they were still working him. And he was dying. And he was from a kid's home. He was a little yeah. kid that needed protection. Yeah. And they were doing this, and you know, so I, I put it together. So they were being traded at the lower level. They'd be taken to a crack house. Yeah. And they'll be exchanged. A girl be exchanged to ten rocks. So there'll be all, all the all the crack dealers and that would take. And some of these were young so yeah, called tough yeah. guys you know would yeah. take the girls for an hour and then they'd say right here's 10 rocks to, yeah. to the procurer to, to the, the prostitute girl yeah. and, then, and then on the other hand they'd be taken to a posh upmarket Mayfair restaurant where they'd be traded for 500 quid an hour to some rich right. Arabs right. Yeah. or a yeah. judge Yeah. Uh, so I thought right well this has got to go down on paper so I did a report and it was all based on facts. And you know, yeah. the social worker was on board with us saying, John, it's, it's, it's been going on for years and, yeah. and I've got evidence. So I, I literally did this report, I sent it off thinking, because there was two of us, it's just me and a girl working on this. Yeah. And uh, I said, you know what, that's it, that's the end of it. Um, we're gonna get um, more staff and we're gonna get a car and we're gonna get overtime budget and everything. But in the end, I was dragged in, to cut a long story short, by this guy who's now one of the UK's most senior officers, um, dragged me in. And he said to me, what the FNL have you done? He said, if you mention a word of this, you will be thrown to the wolves. You will lose your home, your children, your job. You have no idea who or what you're dealing with. This goes so deep. Yeah. He said, no one will protect you. He said, shut the F up. Yeah. You've got to. And he said, no, I'm telling you now, you've got to take this seriously. Yeah. And that was it. I mean, I was petrified. Yeah. So now, Brian, we've got the second time now. So I've gone from one specialist job yeah. Where, where yeah. I, I could have retired there doing sod off with yeah. my career, but I looked into child abuse, bang, shut down. Now, the second one, one of the best jobs you could have got, yeah, could have taken me all around the world. I could be giving talks on it, you yeah. know, yeah. universities now, bang. But isn't it strange when you get like, say, they'll go to a crack house, they'll have all the police, they'll have the cameras there, and everything, kick the door, and yeah. four people getting yeah. into a couple of bits of gear, yeah, yeah. and they'll get all the paper doing, you're doing something like this, it's yeah. horrific, and they've got yeah. no cameras, and the nothing. Police. And they have the cameras there, following them and everything, because yeah. you've got the right to, yeah. to video, they would have stopped them doing it. Yeah. yeah. And and who else would they have uncovered it? Exactly, and, yeah. And People would have come forward, wouldn't they? Then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so what happened then was, um, I, I was, I was Annoying. bricking it. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, I was yeah. sitting there thinking, yeah. what, what do I do? You know, my, my life had just been crushed. Yeah. But I, I knew that the way he said it, you know, he was actually, he, he was, he was like threatening, threatening me, yeah. but he was also it, 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 pleading with me, yeah, not yeah, to do it. you're yeah. going to lose it all, you know, yeah. but he said, you've got no idea who or what you're dealing with. Now, I thought I was just dealing with a load of perverts who like sex with kids. Yeah. I was later to learn, I was dealing with a very dark, top of the top, yeah. organisation, yeah. which really basically binds all the criminality together. Do you think a lot yeah. of it, so there was saying there's a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. 100% yeah. it is yeah. satanically linked yeah. Yeah. and people are going to sit there and go John what are you saying but yeah. everything I yeah. say but yeah. I want to evidence no. and quantify yeah. this so yeah. we've taken that big leap from yeah. child abuse to satanism yeah. but I'm telling you what it, yeah. it is ultimately that I've is heard it. about it for a long time yeah. and I've never, I've never talked to an expert like yourself yeah. and if I did, did talk myself I think I'm a crackpot yeah. well obviously you know this because it's your game but then from there Brian yeah. I then they, they said, so I thought, I can't work here anymore, but I was offered any job I wanted. Right. So I then went from there, I went to a child abuse unit, 
So this is basically in you know any sort of like borough of any city or town or whatever, and you'd be dealing with allegations of abuse, not prostitution, but yeah. abuse. So people hitting it. So you could have any job you wanted, but you took this one. I took that, yeah, because you wanted to work with the kids. expose them. Yeah, and and the other thing, I couldn't sleep. It kept eating yeah, me up. Yeah, I can and, imagine and, that. And, and this little girl then died. Wow. And and it, it taunt, honestly yeah. it did, and it was um, it was a catalyst for me to keep moving on. away, but keep also keep to move on. away yeah. from the police and do yeah. what I'm doing now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one way or the other, I was going to keep going with or without this him. This way, he became the whistleblower. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I actually shut yeah. my mouth at that point. Yeah. Because I was frightened, and my kids were still young. Right. But they started getting older. So I went to this other unit, and it was in a, a really built up inner city area of London. It was Tot Tottenham. I was in Harringay, so we had yeah. Tottenham and and parts of Hackney, real real rough East End area. And um, I said that I said to someone that you know. Um, what was the demographics? And they said, well, you'll, you'll be given your, your job to do your investigations, but you, you to take on another role on your downtime. There was never any downtime, so it was a waste of time. Yeah. And he said, I said, is there any of them to do with child prostitution? I went, yeah, funny enough, the girl who had that job looking at child prostitution, and that's how they termed it back then. Now they call it yeah. sexual exploitation, but it's, right. you know, it's an argument over semantics. And yeah. it's, uh, um, she said she did it for two years. She's just gone to have a kid. She left. She said, "I said, how'd she get on? Is there any notes?" She went, "None, because she never found any. It's not a problem in this borough." So, so what? Oh, I, I can see what's going to come here. <laughs> right, so, so what I did was, like, "Well, can I have this job?" Yeah. I went, "Yeah." Yeah. And I said, "We've got contact social services." So they said, "Gave me the contact." So yeah. I, I, I literally got the phone, rang up, and I rang up the the, uh, the department I needed, and I said, "Look, I told them what I was doing." And I said, "Can you send me a list of all the kids' homes?" They said, "Yeah, we got loads on this borough. Yeah, we'll send them through to you." So this list come through now. They're not like the big Bernardo's homes. These are like a business. You buy an old Victorian yeah. home with maybe six, seven bedrooms, yeah. and you'll shove a kid in each one, right? Yeah. So the kids will be taken out of a domestic situation, yeah. put in there. There'll be a desk with someone there that, that lets people in and out, right. and they'll have an onboard social worker right. in there, and people that will cook for them and everything else. Yeah. But they weren't catering. There was no care. There, there was no love there. It was a, it was purely no. a business. Yeah in which whoever, you could buy it, you could get the Dalton's Weekly and buy a kid's home, like and buy old people's home. So they were getting two grand a week per child. And the more crackers the kid was, and I mean that respectfully yeah. out there, you know, because I do get harangued for anything, because yeah. I talk about Satanism, anything I say. Yeah. I mean, what did I say the other day? I said, Flid, oh my word, the attacks I got from people for saying yeah. that. Yeah. So I try not to. Um, it's just it again. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> you wait, it'll come, you watch, they'll be, you know, just attacking disabled people. I know you come like, from a yoga and yeah, come yeah. with these, I can see you know, this. I'll just, yeah. uh, but this is what they do. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what happened was, um, they'll get more money. So these, these care homes are getting 10 grand a week, right? So, so I rang up the first one and I said, look, my name's John, this is my job, and just check in, no problem, no one's in any trouble here. No. And the manager went, okay, I said, how many kids you got? He went, five. So how many of them did you lose at the weekend? I went three. I went, you know what I mean by losing, being pimped out, I went, yeah, three. Yeah, yeah. And I went, every weekend, I went, yeah. So I did that, so it was within 10 minutes, right, I found three kids. More than this woman who yeah, went two years. years. In two, two years, years. yeah. By the end, the end of, of five days, I found 52 children, right? Phenomenal. And I, I put down 50 on the report, but it was actually 52 kids, right? And I was thinking, not, do you think I'm not being rude or anything do you think she might have been getting paid to look the other way um, I just think that she was I mean I've just been couldn't what, be bothered what you're going to get yeah. you're going to get police corruption yeah right but there's usually money involved with that and, yes. and I'll like talk about it if I can yeah. about police yeah. corruption yeah. Um, but you get a lot of it is incompetence and laziness right it served her well to go yeah. home just blind and, Turn a blind they yeah, don't want to yeah, know yeah. it's too much hassle right she needs to pick her kid up from the crash yes yeah and she wants to go home and her husband wants his dinner and that's right. near enough yeah. what it was you know um so so we had all these kids going yeah and, and i'm thinking flipping out what am i going to do with this so i think right i've got to hold a meeting so i held a meeting and i brought in the social services i brought in a leading kids charity I brought in all these independent, they call them NGOs, non-government organisations. I right. brought them all in and I sat them all down and said, look, this is the problem. Anyway, the, the head for social services who deals with um, 
exploitation. She started shouting at me. She said, what the F have you done? She said, my God, we can't deal with this. We've got to put care plans in for all. Mm. I went, but you knew about these kids. She went, yeah, but while they're on the street making money, they're shutting their gobs. They're, not, they're all right. They behave yeah. themselves. Yeah. Um, and then someone from a leading kids charity. Yeah. And I would say to people, if you want to invest your money, go independently. You know, yeah. they don't serve the children. No. These domestic ones, they really don't. Yeah, it's just about the money. Yeah, it yeah. was about the money. Yeah. She's shouting me down as well. I mean, you, know, you can't believe this, can no, you? No. you you're but, listening to me. But the other thing with this, Brian, is that it started looking at these kids that were missing were classed as missing persons. Right. So these kids go missing. So there's a missing person unit, right? Yes. There's meant to be... Um, interviewing everyone that comes back from being missing or is found, yeah. what happened to you and all that. These kids were going missing, at least 50 of them every week, every single week. So at the end of a year, I don't know how many that is, 50 a week for 52 weeks. I mean, that's, I don't know, do the math, maybe it's yeah. 2,500, 25, I don't know. But it's thousands yeah. Yeah. on one borough. Yeah. So in the whole of London, that, what that, one's too many yeah yeah i know yeah. I, I mean you're talking tens of thousands yeah, of kids yeah. going missing yeah. straight into prostitution yeah but they're coming back yet no one's meant to be talking dealing with them mm-hmm. yet the vice unit had no interest and this unit the next thing i know i come into work after this meeting they said you're being moved and i got shifted again i got moved again yeah so obviously what you're doing you're doing yeah. your job right and yeah. properly yeah and then i was i was advised to take a job teaching again because it, <laughs> it, it will be better for my health my mental oh, health right. if i i spent more time you know getting a regular job so i could go home and it's what type of teacher like your school teacher but well it's teaching detectives oh, right, right. um teaching detectives out in right. it, it was good because it was a platform for me yeah. really to I, tell them this yeah but then and gives you a rest at yeah. all a little bit because you must have been exhausted with it. I was, but then out. then I got disciplined for taking them to the pub, drinking on duty. So, right. for the, you know, so but I was a bit I, of a rebel oh, round, oh, man. <laughs> but I was telling them, I was telling them, look, this is what's going on. Yeah. Um, and then what happened was Jimmy Savile, Sir Saint Jimmy, oh, you know, file, man. you know, the man who yeah. built hospitals and you know was seen as a saint. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, he, I think. He was a gift from God because without him being exposed, yeah, we'd yeah, never known, yeah, would we? Exactly, yeah. It's such yeah. a perverted it's a way of looking way at it. it. It's a good way of looking at it. You yeah. know, and uh, when he got exposed, by this time my my mental health was deteriorating because this little girl had died, yeah. and it was coming out. And when yeah. when it came out about Jimmy Savile, and then other officers were coming forward. Yeah, I was like, oh, so that was what's happened is the hearts are starting to melt, realizing yeah. they've not done the job. And now we've got a chance to make amends. Yeah, well, yeah. I thought it was on my own. Yeah. I thought it was just me. Yeah. Right, because this is what they do when they bully you. Yeah, they, yeah. they put it all on you, a bit like yeah, a battered yeah. wife. Look what you yeah. made me do. Yeah, yeah, Look at you. Yeah, and, you yeah. and I sat down and thought, I'm not alone. So I got in touch with um, one other whistleblower. And then I got in touch with another one. You know, so there was one from the north up here. There was one from uh, Jersey, the Channel Islands. And all of them have been bullied. It must have been like a breath of fresh air. Oh, I just couldn't believe yeah, it. Yeah, to be on your side, yeah. And then politicians started saying, look, come and talk to us. So I oh, talked to a few politicians, no. and they were saying, look, you know, we knew about this yeah, politician, yeah. that politician. And, and I thought, right, I've got to speak out. Mm. So I thought, well, now's the time. So I, um, but what I was doing was, I was actually trying to instigate a, a situation where a senior officer would, would have intervention with me, because I, I become fearful of senior officers. Right. Because every Rightly time they so. come near me, yeah. I thought, shit. You have to move to, on, you have yeah. to do this, or you're yeah. Yeah, I see. So um, what I started doing was I started smoking in the office. Right. I, I just started, <laughs> when the, I'd start smoking, and I started drinking um, in the cars and leaving a yeah. can of beer in the car on purpose to get cool. Right. To cause a situation, so they'd say, who's done this? Yeah. And I, I would turn up with holes in my jeans. I wouldn't wear a suit. And I bet you they never they they didn't think they, they, so I knew they wouldn't. They I didn't. knew it. One day, Plus, you know, cause any trouble, mate. So we didn't yeah. come down. I got yeah. my feet on the desk. <laughs> There's smoke everywhere. And yeah. went, Are you all right, John? And went, Yeah, <laughs> you. And, he, and as he left, yeah. I said to him, uh, Am I okay then? He went, Yeah. So I said, I'll go home then. <laughs> yeah. No, well, they never said a word. No, because you're not, you're not uh, yeah. ruffling their feathers type of thing. I can not believe yeah. it. But in the end, I yeah. made an allegation and I actually um, said to my inspector, I, I need to talk to you now. So I said, Right, yeah. I want, I, this has been in me for a long time. Yeah. And bang, I let him have it. Yeah. So he, he basically ignored it. Right. Um, so well, I think he ignored it. 
Um, I think it was the fear of his own job. For, yeah, I just think thing. he just sat there and, yeah. and he, he was like, so I just went sick. Yeah. And then I made another allegation. Yeah. And I said, right, and it's a strange thing. I I said, I want to speak to the their corruption, anti-corruption command. Yeah. And they, they got a PC wrong me. I said, no, 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 no. It has to be a female senior detective. Well, and that was, that was it. Well, yeah. funny enough, have you seen that um, docu- the drama Line of Duty? Yeah. That line exactly is used four years later after I've, and I thought, well, oh, right. and she said to me, why? Yeah. Why? And yeah. I said, you can't roll your trouser leg up. Yeah. Meaning, yeah. your sonic link, you know? Yeah, yeah. And she said, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. yeah. So I made this allegation of corruption yeah, and they got that. everything, once yeah. and all, they got the lot. And I know. Was good? Was she good? To she was yeah, lovely. Yeah, she was yeah, lovely. But yeah. the bizarre thing is, as I, as I was coming out, there was a guy waiting in, in the corridor, and it was one of the inspectors from the vice unit. Right. And it was a sterile. It was a secure building. You know, this yeah. lot are in there. It's all secure. You, no one really knows that so they're there. Solution. I know you were there. What? What's yeah, he doing there? Exactly. And he went, "You're right, John." And he started then asking me questions about the senior officer, that I just reported. He went, oh, do you, uh, do you ever have any dealings with so-and-so? And I, and I was like, why would you say that? Of course, it's confidential between yeah. you and that girl. And, yeah. I, and yeah. it really freaked me, you know, and I'm yeah. thinking, uh, anyway, so I got out there. And then um, I started making contact with the these other whistleblowers. And one was a guy called Lenny Harper, who had exposed the, and this is poignant to something that we mentioned a bit earlier, because I'd like to um, go on about the McCann case, if I yeah. may, at yeah, some course, point. Yeah, of course, yeah. Well but, done to this man. Yeah, well yeah, done to him. yeah. Hats off. Well, well, Lenny Harper had exposed um, not just sex parties, but but child murder at a children's home in Jersey oh. called Hope de la Garenne. Yeah. And he was a uh, he's a Belfast guy, very stalwart, staunch detective, gone out there mm. from the Met Police, gone out there, and he'd exposed it. And not only did he expose it's it, the one with the found the bodies. Yeah. Yeah. Seen the he took an anthropologist, yeah. an archaeologist. And this sniffer dog, well, I can't remember the name of this sniffer dog, and he said, we went there, he said, everyone was against me from the start, everyone. He said, but my team were good, brought a couple of lads from the mainland in there, and off we went. Yeah. And we went meticulously through this, and he said, these kids were, were mentioning about being tortured, yeah. about being shackled, put in a bath. So this is when we start getting into satanic, satanic stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and this is more the accounts I start, I've subsequently started so hearing. There's a difference between being a paedophile and a satanic paedophile, isn't yeah. there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they're both doing the devil's work, yeah, yeah. but that's a step, what was it, it, thing, yeah. without a doubt, it's, it, it really is a step it's further in the, the whole. I, I, but I yeah, do that yeah, all the time. Yeah. I, I say, you know, actually it's that way, not. Yeah. And, and I can explain that. And yeah. also, Brian, what you'll see is those that are victim of, of child sexual abuse, uh, they will be different to those that are victims of satanic ritual so abuse. The satanic rituals are a lot worse. They are yeah, t- yeah, 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 they've yeah. got a multiple personality. Torture and something, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and we can talk about yeah, that. Yeah, that, yeah, that I think can. that's interesting yeah. to say. So I was watching this guy, and I went and saw him. Went up to Scotland to see him, and he said, "I went. We went through every bit, and we found the handcuffs. We found still blood stains on there. The dog yeah. picked up the smell." A cadaver dog will only pick up the smell of a pig or a human. Yes, it's the same. Same, yeah. And uh, said there was bone fragments. So the anthropologist said that is the bone of, of a junior school age child, so age between four to eight. Horrific. And he said there was collagen in there, tested for collagen. Yeah. That is a child's yeah. bone. Yeah. Bagged it up, sealed it, as the police do, with a unique seal reference. Yeah. Off it goes to the laboratory in London. Anyway, the body part comes back in a different bag with a different ratchet, with the, but the same unique seal reference, which is impossible. You start You're having not. the same passport number, yeah. it don't happen. And the report so is it's, it's coconut swapped. shell. Yeah, it's been swapped. Yeah, yeah it's coconut seen, yeah. shell. And then... But, but these are professional anthropologists, the yeah. dog's professional. Oh, oh, the, the, the dog was... They can't get them wrong. Dogs can't be paid. No, it's, it's irrefutable evidence, <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And the dog then ended up going to the FBI, and they used yeah, it. Yeah. But the evidence, his evidence, was then weakened years later and by the Ken, guns. by Ken, Ken, remember, yeah, yeah. who rubbished the dog, that yeah. rubbished their claims. That, so this and is it never got anything wrong, had it? That no, dog ever? No. It got every single thing right. And and what this guy um, from Jersey said to me, he said, "They're coming for you." He <laughs> said, "And what they're going to do? They're not going to investigate your claims, and you'll be an idiot to think they are." Everything will be turned on you. They'll have you for data protection violation and anything they can. So I did thought, you ever fear for your life? Well, 
this is interesting because yeah, yeah and and it was yeah. it was highlighted. So all of a sudden, th these allegations started coming in against me. So I started. Um, once I arrested, what they do is they, they sort of report you to be summoned. You know? Right, yeah. Did it make you stronger when you got these allegations? Uh, make you want at, to fight more? At, at, at that point, no. no but there right. was a turning point where right. I did. Right. And and I'll, I'll shortly go onto that. And there was yeah, something yeah. that really turned me around. Yeah. So all of a sudden they're saying, "Right, you're being investigated for um, uh, data protection violations." Exactly what I was told yeah. by, by him and, and another woman yeah, detective. Yeah. Same thing happened. So it was one, and then it was another one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then they went through ten years of my emails, and then the next thing, they said, right, you're, you're going to caution you. Um, you know, you're going to be um, they're not arrested, but it's like caution plus three yeah, and all yeah. that. And the allegation: supply of class A drugs. <laughs> I, <was> like, what? <laughs> I actually laughed, and I and I laughed, and and I said, what, what are you on about class A drugs? But what it was, I, I had a friend who was a, who was a covert infiltrator. Right. And he would be sent all around the country and he'd live as a tramp. Yeah, and he pretend to take the drugs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and he also used to have a little bottle of methadone with this pseudonym name of his. Yeah. And he, he, and he, he literally used to urinate himself. He'd pee yeah, his pants. Yeah. And he always stunk of weight and, and everything else. And he was undercover. Police yeah, he was undercover. He was yeah. tattoos yeah. everywhere. Yeah. And he'd go yeah. back with a little dog. And, and he, was, he was the best they had. He was yeah. brilliant. Yeah. But yeah, he had a nervous breakdown because they all end up multiple personalities. They don't know what's yeah, going on. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, they, they don't. Totally <laughs> so playing that part that long to become yeah. that person. And he ended yeah. up being beaten up all the time as well. <laughs> you know, people coming out of the pub start kicking him in the face. Yeah, and that. yeah. So he um he he went mad. Uh, yeah, bless him. I don't mean that if you're watching. Yeah. But he um he went mad and ended up in France. He went off to France. Yeah. But he needed a friend. So right. He'd lost all his phones, all his contacts. Yeah. But all he remembered is Wedger. There are no other wedgers anywhere, you know. Oh, yeah. If I put in John Wedger at metpolice.co.uk, whatever, yeah. I'm going to get through with John. So he'd gone into an internet cafe and said, Please, can we meet? I want to come to England, you know, yeah. uh, let's have a drink. Oh, yeah. So I said to him, Of course, uh, you know, I said, I'll tell you what, um, you bring the tenant super, I'll bring the methadone, we'll have a cocktail. Yeah. on a bench yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then so of course yeah. the next thing and that's what it was I didn't know that time yeah. I thought yeah. you know so that uh, supply method and they went you're going to get 15 years for this and I, I did I laughed and they said you need to sign this so I said that's okay I, I will sign that but I, I'll tell you what I'll do once I've signed it and he went what I said I'm going to stick this pen in your eye and he went you are I said yeah I'm going to stick it in your eye you've ruined my life I'm going to ruin your eyesight and, and so he wouldn't give me the pen yeah. <laughs> and he just stared at me him and his mate and they walked out right yeah. anyway next thing of course I've got threats to, to, to come all assault yeah yeah and then uh, it just went on and on and on then he stopped and then he paying would a blind eye wouldn't yeah, he yeah. and then another one that I said if <laughs> 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 oh, but I mean it, it become a joke it was yeah, just so yeah, stupid yeah. and then I weren't getting paid and then I was on surveillance. Yes. They put me under surveillance, but the poor guy I was doing, I end up doing, you know, like, you know, 50 years old, I'm back digging old foundations and block laying and things like that, you yeah. know, for some lad who's in his 20s. And uh, he got worried that he was, because I end up in the newspaper, and he mm. went, flipping hell, John, I, if you're on one, they'll do me as well yeah, for yeah. taking you on. So he, he backed off. Did you ever feel that you got followed, though? Yeah, yeah well, yeah. I, to be honest, I knew I would be. Yeah. Um, and I subsequently found out I was. Sus, you looked on your yeah, yeah. you sussed straight away, don't you? But I was, yeah. I was so in a bad place, and I was drinking heavily mm. that I didn't care in the end. I right. just, I just wasn't yeah. bothered in the end. Um, but so the threats that were made against me was you'll lose your home, your children, and your job. So my job was gone. You know, I, yeah. I was looking at uh, there was nine cases, criminal cases against me. Each one of them came, came with a, an employment issue as well. Yeah. So that I was going to lose my job. Yeah. I was going to go to prison. There was yeah. so much weight against, you know. I refused to be interviewed. I said, no, I'm not And all you had to do was say, I'll give up. Yeah, yeah, Everything. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's all and they wanted. Off with everything, yeah. And if I. So they were trying to break you, they, they were. And yeah. if I'd yeah. have been interviewed by them, and they would have offered me a deal, the moment I took the deal, I was sacked. So yeah. they got me paying me my pension. Yeah. And then they would have said, look, we'll stop you going to prison. And I, I won't yeah. negotiate with them. No. They were my enemy. Well and that done, Got to say, you know, well done. They were my enemy. And I just. And I had to keep telling myself, Hang on, there's, there's kids there getting hurt. Yeah. So every time, 
anything happened, I said, you're protecting, and I would say this scene of yeah. thing, and he's protecting paedophiles, and that's all I kept doing. Yeah. You know, and there was a process with the, the doctors within the police, I had to sort of um, deal with all that HR personnel side of it as well, which is a nightmare, but, so. Did you ever try to say you'd lost your mind and try to give you oh, a yeah. psychological Yeah, they'd say you're an, you're an alcoholic, and, yeah. you know, so, I, I will tell you something off camera yeah. because yeah. it's not really for public consumption. Yeah, yeah, how, yeah, how yeah. you know, yeah. you've just got to use a little bit of intelligence sometimes yeah, with yeah. things. Do you know what I mean? But one well, of that's my, what they do. A lot of people don't. They just say he's lost his mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, or they'll say we can do a deal. Yeah. Well, well, why would I deal with them? They, they've got nothing I want. No. There is nothing they have I want. No. You know. But but obviously. So this time now you went giving yeah, them no yeah, matter what. Yeah, no, yeah. no matter what, you know. Yeah. But then one of my children, um, I was working late one day, I was working with some Russians and we were digging, um, digging out a tree stump. And I went back to my car and I got fifty missed calls. I'm like, what's happened? Ring me now, ring me now, ring me now, dad, dad, ring, ring me. So I rang up one of my boys and he's screaming at me, Where are you? You've got to get to hospital in Cambridge, which is miles away, Cambridge, yeah. I'm in yeah. London. And uh, he said, it's, and it's one of my older boys, he's in hospital. He said, Dad, he's, he's going to die. Right. I went, what do you want about? He said, he's broken his neck. Wow. So, oh. so he was involved in a terrible accident and his spinal column was snapped. It was like that, it was snapped 95%. It was hanging oh, off like that. Horrific. On his neck. Um, so I get to the hospital and my oldest boy comes up and just whacks me. <laughs> for not being there for probably not being shot. there yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He, yeah. and he's probably being shot on me. and he's shouting at me and and anyway the doctor comes yeah. and said look we, we, we managed to get the main surgeon in we yeah. rushed him in they yeah. sent a the car he's on his way and he said look his rule is if he if, if within 40 minutes if your son survives and it's done in 40 minutes yeah. he'll, he, you, you'll keep him he'll be alive yeah. but if it goes any more than 40 minutes you've lost him he's gone and I can remember driving it must home. Must have been unbelievable what you were and thinking. He, yeah, yeah, and he said, go home. I was covered in mud. I smelled of burning. We had a fire and all that. So I'm driving home. He said, go and have a wash and get back here. Yeah. So I drove home. And as I drove home, I was going through the, the lanes. Uh, and a shooting star went straight across my car. Boom, like that. Yeah. And I think, wow, well, that's a that's an omen. And I prayed. I said, just give me my boy back. It's the God, yeah. 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 Anyway, I got home. And then the call came in. My son, he said, he, he, he's done the operation. Tyler's alive, Tyler. I don't tell my name. But he's yeah. alive. Well, anyway, and I went. Been, I went yeah. to yeah. Anyway, I went back to the hospital. Anyway, at the same time, there was still this persecutor. They kept serving me with more papers. Yeah. The bank was now trying to get my home, and then I remember my boy was in intensive care, and something really strange happened, and he um, had a pipe in his mouth they were ventilating his lungs and they allowed it out for like half an hour yeah. so his larynx wouldn't seal up right. you know? yeah. and he could just about whisper he could only move his right hand that's the only movement he had and yeah. his right toes and yeah. the rest of him he was really yeah. paralysed and I went up to see him and his pipe's out and the nurses there say he doesn't want to see you I went well, well why and he's, he's like doing that with his hand and so I went up to him and he's whispering, he went, go, go, you got to go. And I went, why? He went, the witches. I went, what are you want about the witches? He said, they've been waiting for you. They're flying around. They've been waiting for you. Right. I went, hey, uh, where's, and he, he said, he keeps going talking about witches yeah. waiting for my dad. Yeah. He said, they hate your dad. They hate you. They yeah. hate you for what you do. you got to go. And yeah. they're spitting on you. They're urinating yeah. on you. They, they hate you. And he, he said, they're there. He said, just go. So I went home. And they said, usually you got delirium when they're on yeah. drugs too long, but it lasts yeah. for about two hours. He'd been like that for 48 hours yeah. in a delirious state. And I thought his mind had gone. Anyway, yeah. I went home and then I get a phone call uh, and I, I weren't drinking them because I was up down the hospital. Yeah. And, uh, and I just thought I just need to drink. So I remember opening a can of beer, having a mouthful, the phone went and it was the doc doctor in the hospital, can you come straight back? Yeah. We need you. So I was like, baby, no petrol. Literally, I was running on fumes, you know. Got there, there's three consultants, and they're, they're waiting. They said, look, we've, we've lost your son. Right. Well, what do you mean? He was all right. He said, look, he's gone into full cardiac arrest. His lungs have stopped. His liver's packed down. He said, 10 minutes, he was out. We've, we've been doing CPR for seven minutes. We've broken his ribs. He's, you know, in a, they, anyway, he was in a mess. And he said, yeah. but we've got a heart murmur back. He's on 100% resus. His brain 
would have been without oxygen for for ten minutes. He's gonna yeah. he's gonna have it's brain damage. damage. Yeah, yeah. The damage to his body anyway. Yeah. Um, we're we're gonna oh. turn the machine off after five days. You've got five days. We're allowed that by law. Paid. Yeah. Yeah. They said, but they give you by yeah. law, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And they said, if you want to sign a disclaimer, you want to argue us, and I said, I, I just sign whatever. You've done everything. I had to accept it. What could I do? Yeah. You know, they've done yeah. their best. And and this is what changed me. And I stood by his side and I held his hand for three days. And when they had to come and clean him, or you know, move him or move the body, and all the yeah. time, all I was doing was moving his legs and his arm, praying, praying. Yeah. And I remember sitting in the chapel. They had a chapel there. I'd go and get cupped in. I just sat in the chapel, and I, and I had it out with God, and I said, "You want me to help kids? Well, I ain't doing it. I ain't. What man am I if I can't help my own son? My son's dying there. There's nothing I can do to help him. You, you take my son. You have everyone else's kids too, because I'm not doing it. So I said, totally frustration. Oh, right? hatred yeah, yeah, and yeah, that. Yeah. I said, I'm not doing it. Yeah. I am not doing it for no one else. So you were broken. Their own parents yeah. can deal with them. They're yeah. not my problem. I lose my kid. I lose everything. And I went back, and he opened his eyes. His eyes opened. Oh, and, uh, oh Jesus Christ, yeah, it's real. I know, honest to God, yeah. his eyes opened. And, yeah. and I said, son, I love you. And he went, he, he went, I love you too, you can hear it. I feel the hands in the back of and, and, and I said, I just want you to move. Well, and he moved his left hand, he moved his right hand, he moved his legs. That's unbelievable. And I went, I'm going home. And I said, you're standing, I went, no, I'm going home. And, and do you know, yeah, must have felt like I'm, oh, yeah, I'm sticking on oh, now. I'm, I'm going on. I'm never going to give in. Never give in. And, yeah. and, and the yeah. doctor called me back and said, "Now stay with him." I went, "Why?" She said, "And it was late to find out that sometimes when they die, they take their organs out of them as well." Yeah. You know, yeah. There, there's a lot of skullduggery goes on. Yeah. Anyway, so I, I I went back with him and they classed it as a mirac miraculous recovery. He weren't even meant to use his lungs. He walked out of hospital. He yeah. Walked. And he's gone on to get, well, he, he couldn't get married because of COVID. He's gone on to, to get, you know, near enough, I say married for the sake of an argument, buy a house yeah. and have a child. That's fantastic. You know, Unbelievable. Unreal. Well done. And that, and, but when I come home from him um, being like that, I came home and the police were there waiting for me. They said, right. Jeff, you're under arrest for child neglect. Right. Because I've been there for three days. Oh, right. They, they'd found out. They'd found out. Um, I thought someone had told them, but they, they obviously found out through surveillance and all that. So my my, not the lad here, but the younger one in him. He's he's old enough now. He's about fifteen now. Yeah. Said he's been home alone. You left the fifteen year old home alone with my twenty six year old. With my twenty six year old. Oh, just any excuse, innit? Yep. Yeah. And they said, look, we're going to caution you. And I just said to this bloke, "Shame on said, them, close shame." Yeah. Well, I see, went through that. Yeah. You think that your son's gone for good? However, that it didn't yeah. get proceeded with that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And one of the senior cop he saw and I said, please listen to me. And he yeah. turned around and he gave me a big hug, actually. I said, was look, I'll, well I'll, done, I'll yeah, do yeah, what yeah, I can brilliant. do. But after that, Brian, it changed yeah. me. Yeah. And I thought, you know what? The, the gloves are off now. You were prepared to do that at yeah. the lowest point. Yeah, you, you didn't show yeah. any dignity, yeah. any compassion, yeah. no love for humanity. Yeah. That's what you wanted to do, to yeah. shut me up. Yeah. Because I knew about politicians, judges, senior officers yeah. that were involved in having sex with children. Yeah. Yeah. And do you know what? Th this is war now. Of course. And, yeah. and then what happened then was, I remember watching the telly, and there was, the alternate media just started coming out, and they started having yeah. these, um, Sky Telly had a channel that was set up for alternate media, and there was a yeah. thing, I think called Edge TV had come out, and it was, I think, Channel 232 on Sky. And I was watching it, and there was this guy, he was in Trafalgar Square, and he's standing there and he's a proper cockney and you and he looked like a tasty lad, you know, he looked yeah, he, but it was an older boy and he's standing yeah. there and he's going, and the Queen knows about being a bit out and they about being, they've covered up and they abused us, we were all in care and they raped us and abused right. us. And he's screaming and he's a proper Londoner and I think, God, I like him. Yeah. You know, I really like him. And um it was Bill Maloney. Right, right. Uh, from Pine Mash So uh, me and him, I got in touch with Bill and um and uh, we just started campaigning together. And of course, Bill was heavily involved with the organised criminals from South East London, very well. You know, and some of them said to him, look, we hear you teamed up with an ex cop at night. And he went, yeah, but he's dealing with a child. He said, we ain't got a problem with no, that, Bill. That's yeah. why I we ain't got a problem with that. Yeah. I would you know, never speak to a cop yeah, in my yeah, life, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. only if it was for children or somebody being killed, like uh, yeah. a, a, a 
kid or something like that and what you're doing I think is fantastic well, but if you don't speak what you've done now you've come full circle people believe in you I believe in you other people believe in you the church believe in you you're a Christian yeah. like us and we really believe in you I oh, think you are, what you're doing is fantastic and absolutely amazing story I think it's and, brilliant and if, if every anyone if you was to meet anyone that got a call in it's me yeah. Uh, this is in every sinew of my body it's in every cell pumping around yeah, me yeah. and every every time I want to give up and I do want to give up so many times yeah. and you know and all of a sudden I do it yeah. a phone call will go and someone says John can you help me well if you feel like you giving know. up phone me because yeah. I'll make yeah, 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 you yeah, 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 and everyone's well, phone you phone me <laughs> well, 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 well that's what I do yeah, I mean yeah. uh, Chris Lambriano yeah, yeah. and uh, someone said to all him, guys like that we're all tough guys we've been yeah. in that game but we don't like to see kids children no, no. save our children like well, you say well someone said to Chris Lambriano once he said oh yeah you're talking to copper he went yeah I do yeah. every week I ring him up when I pray with him yeah yeah, you know? yeah. and he does hats off to him he's a good man isn't he? a really good man and the criminal fraternity the, the lads like myself who've done wrong in the past and we're Christian now we've turned our life on we'll help you all day long yeah, yeah, yeah. But we want to help you I'd have helped you even then days yeah. because it's children it's how kids. can you abuse children it's, it's disgusting and, and and that's that's what it was. I weren't interested in anything else. I didn't, uh, you know, and even more so now. But um, you know, lot, my life has totally changed. And of course, then I thought, what do I do? How do I how do I then move this forward? Because I wasn't the media didn't want to come near me because yeah. they'd been told not to. And this is something I want to talk about the intelligence services as yeah. well. And I thought, well, I've got these skills. They, yeah. they use me as a specialist interviewer. Mm -hmm. What they used to do, because I was a good communicator, they used to try and send me into the prisons to get information. And yeah. I, used to, I went Barlini, I've been in Greenwich Prison, the Scottish yeah. system, yeah. And, and through the UK, everywhere. Yeah. And uh, and I, I was very good at interviewing kids and yeah. all that. So yeah. I thought, well, I'll use my phone. Or, you know, someone trained me. There's um, uh, Brees Media, there's a. Uh, uh, a media company, you know, Anna runs it, said, look, I'll yeah. show you, use yeah. your phone and go out and interview them. So what I did was I went out and I started interviewing victims and survivors of abuse. That's brilliant. And I said, I'll give you, you know, the voice. Yeah. And then I found a lot of them have been in the prison system. Yeah. And then that tied into them very early years when that lad said to me. Yeah. You know, what, and then, when, yeah. and then what I started seeing was the system um, all it did was make money out of it, Brian. Yeah. You know, do you know what I mean? I've been saying that for years. That's it, it's help. unbelievable. Yeah. That's like I said, you know, they should legalise heroin because yeah. if they legalise it, the Taliban won't make no money. And the criminals on the streets can't sell it. People can't overdose. People can be taken and given it, administrated. It'd be a lot cheaper than the, the prison service would have a lot more room. The kids yeah. would get the food. It just, it's just well, exponentially uh, the best idea I think you can do. But, but, but they won't do it, like you said, but they're making money out of it. And, and, uh, and what is heroin? It's a painkiller. Exactly. And yeah. there's people in pain, and pain is in the heart as well, you know? Yes, yes. And, and so they're taking a painkiller, an analgesic, and knock themselves out, and I get that. Yeah. I've not done heroin. To, but forget, to forget what happens to being yeah. saved and abused, and then sadly, they sell the bodies because they need the money for the drug that they're on. But so nobody should throw stones at anyone. Who hasn't seen cast the first stone and don't throw a stone at the don't throw stones if you live in greenhouse. I know. You know? And, and the other thing with it, Brian, it's not that they're taking heroin. Yeah. Because heroin, it, it comes in, in these bales, as you may know, yeah. and it compressed into these blocks, kilo yeah. piece, whatever. Yeah. And it's 96% purity. Yeah. Right? So you might need a little bit of that and you probably w would get high born, get a little. Yeah. They're taking. Five percent yeah, off the streets. Purity. What well, can kill them because it's full of to death. crap. Yeah, yeah. Injecting it into yeah. the and destroying the body. Yeah, yeah. It, it's but also. But also, the, I was just going to say sorry. That's right. Um, a lot of people on these painkillers can have a off the doctors prescribed yeah. drugs off the doctors. Yeah, they're just as bad as the heroin. They, they can't they, get off them. They can't get off it. Gabba pentin, um, subatex, things and all. Yeah, and, horrible. And also um, antidepressants. Yes. I mean, they've been proven not to work. Millions are on it. Millions. But the other thing is, we look at our prison system. I said this to someone. Yeah. You've got in our prison system a seventy-five percent recidivism rate, seventy-five yeah. percent reoffending rate. Of course. So I said to a person, well, I'm going to give you an analogy. I want an extension bill, right? Yeah. Um, right. You say to me, I've got a guy. We'll do your extension for you. Yeah. Right. He's sponsored by the government. Yes. Um, it's going to cost you £450 an hour, which is what they charge, barristers charge the government. Yeah. Right? And bear in mind, you then take me, bear in mind, 75 to 8% of everything he builds falls down immediately. They just laugh we, at you. They you laugh at But we've got to accept that same narrative yeah, when yeah, it comes to yeah, the prison. Yeah. Whereas when you take Scandinavia, 
you know, they've got yeah. a 75% non-offending yeah. and recovery yeah. rate. And these places like Holland have legalised things like yeah. having the drug certain drugs and it's, they don't but, they don't have the offender but, what they don't. But as well as that, therapy. Yeah, therapy. Yeah, that's exactly what you, you know? need, yeah. And, and, and you go to these jails, John, I've been in jail, and what happens is um, you go to jail and you get to learn how to burgle, you learn how to pitch cars, you yeah. learn, it's, it's like you go to school to be a criminal when you yeah. go to jail. So a lot of it, people are just coming back out and once you come out, you can't get a job. Yeah. You've got a criminal record, you can have an IQ through the roof like Albert Einstein. You're not getting a job because you've got a criminal record, so they should be giving jobs. I was thinking of something like, um, if you were given five year and said they do the two, said they do the two, two and a half, and you have to do two and a half in license, give them maybe a year to do. If they do a course in jail, pass the course, give them a job to go to. But if they break it, they have to go back to jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead of keeping them in jail all this time, and then they, when they come out, they've got well, well, the, the crime. The, the other thing they got is this IPP system. Yeah, yeah, it's which crazy. is another scandal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it was, we got one lad in moment was doing our camera work. He's now serving an IPP. Yeah. He's been in there a year. He's not even gone before a parole board yet. No, no. And, it's, and he said, they're just locking us up doing nothing. Yeah. Rotting away. Yeah. And, and, and again, it's, these are kids with all that energy. They're yeah. broken. Something's yeah. put them in there. Of course it is. You know? And they all go, criminals aren't bad. No. You know, you know, it's like anything. So, But uh, the thing is, like you said, Helping them with therapy is more important than just sticking them in the jail. Yeah, Especially of course it is. They're twenty three hours a day with this COVID virus, sat in a cell. Well, well with, with the crazy. COVID thing, yeah, yeah. and, and we've had the warmest summer, yeah. relentless heat. Imagine being yeah. stuck in there. Bad enough sitting in your house, isn't it? Yeah. So being in that is phenomenal. I mean, but the the other thing with it is that uh, you know I started getting uh, a lot of help from what would be classed as a criminal classes. You know. Mm -hmm. um, Chris was phenomenal, put me in touch with another guy called Tony, put me in touch with Terry, you know. Yeah, yeah. And we've all been working together yeah. to, to try and get the government to listen. Not once has a police approached me and said, John, yeah. come on, what do we put right here? Yeah. You which, know what? Which should, Not once. Happen. The thing is, you know, you just stand divided before. The more people that get on board, the more people listen to John, say of our children, the more people is going to help and them they've got to listen. They can't they can't fall in deaf ears kind of deal. We've well, got to stand up for like you said. You know, the, the, and that's all it takes and someone said something to me right a whistleblower is very similar to a victim and survivor mm. now a victim and survivor abuse let me tell you something when, when you stand up one thing happens you stand alone no one stands with you and and this guy said to me take a parachutist they're, they're trying to land with both legs down like that yeah. if you land on one leg you break it yeah. you land on two legs apart you break them yeah. together that's the strength of three yeah. it's a very powerful ratio yeah and said you must stand together unfortunately there's a lot of mental health within the survivor community yeah, yeah. i mean i get accused of working for mi5 and doing this i mean and and one of the reasons um attacks started coming on with me uh was was the inception really came when someone come to me and told me about their abuse and it was what is termed sra satanic ritual abuse yeah which is the worst <sighs> Yeah. So I started speaking out against satanic ritual abuse and that's when the attacks really come. Right. Now, when, when you take, if there is a jigsaw of crime or whatever, you can put together... Four corners. Yeah, yeah. you start, you know, paedophilia yeah. starts filling in a lot of gaps. Yeah. Now, a lot of what they call dishonest crime yeah. is a reserve of the working and the lower classes. It tends to come from the lower end of the market, as it were, socially, and I don't mean to denigrate no, anyone, no. you know. Um, and deprivation areas. yeah deprivation and everything else yeah. you know you know low education I mean I think in the in the category um, C prisons and the under 22s have got an illiteracy rate of, of nearly 80 percent illiteracy yeah. rate which yeah. is appalling yeah you know in this UK you know yeah. kids haven't been parenting properly or there's been failings everywhere yeah. and all along people have made a lot of money out of it yeah you know so you start looking at that and then you start realising why do certain people know certain people they're from different classes well paedophilia it doesn't know any boundaries no no social class no economic boundaries no religious boundaries you know uh, and also gender there's a just lot of the children don't they matter they what colour matter what age whether yeah. well, like the young kids don't mainly but they just want the children no matter what colour they are no matter where they come from mm -hmm. they're not bothered are they? they're not worried and you sit there and think why what, what is it about a kid that, that they uh, want you can't, um, can't contemplate it can you just no. can't them out well we, we had a lady uh, offer the services to us and she, her name's Corrine and she's, she's such a tremendous individual she's on the FBI's top 10 profile list she's the only one that will deal with um, child murderers she'll sit right. down with them 
you know, and she knows their mind. Trying to get to the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's it's really interesting. And what she says, it's quite interesting. I'll I'll sort of draw it out if I may. She said a human being's made out of three balls, as it were. Right. Right. And, you know, so you've got the intel on on the top. And I'll hold this up for the camera. And you've got your emotional and then you've got like like the sexual down there right as it were let's just hold it up for them so you've got like the three balls she said like a bit like a snowman yeah you know so she said if you if you try an outwit a, a paedophile on an intellectual level which a lot of coppers do they think they're, yeah. they're pseudo intellectuals they think they're clever right. you know she said you're going to lose because they are highly deviant highly intelligent right and i think terry alludes to that in his book Living with a Beast he goes on about you know yeah, so yeah. we'll give that a good shout yeah. but he said and everything you know well on the sexual level um, they would have been awakened very early on you know sexually so, so the, very yeah. sexualised right. and, and the lower chakra stuff so, so you don't think they know what they want at a very early age what, what they're well, well, the common paedophile yeah well I just think that you know the, the damage gets done and it's never put right she said but however the emotional Yes. That will be your entry age. She said, that's what you've got to look at. Right. At what point in their life were they hurt? And that tends to be the entry age. So it right. could be seven, it could be eight, it could be younger right. than that. So emotionally, that's when then they, their clock would have stopped. Right. And this one, this intel, would, would the intelligence would have compensated highly right. for it. So she said, that's so... That's why they're intelligent then. Yeah, yeah. yeah, she said, don't outwit them because they'll yeah. win. Yeah. But emotionally... You will always get to them. A bit like a narcissist, isn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, well, it, it, exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly what it is. It, it's narcissism. Yeah. And that's what she said because a narcissist looks after themselves. Yeah, a narcissist thinks he's a king or a yeah, yeah. queen or whatever and, the thing. And, and whatever you do, they're fighting. They think they're fighting for their lives. Yeah. And all oh, this is pure I've been selfishness. Over a football team. Yeah. They, it, they it, have to be right. Yeah. It's yeah. pure selfishness, yeah. and it's all about them. Narcissism. Yeah. And narcissism, yeah. um, children are naturally narcissistic yeah. because it's like the chirping birds. Me, yeah, me, me, yeah, me, yeah, me, because yeah. they've yeah. got to survive. Yeah, and some people are narcissists get all the likes. Children still, that's why they call them. What, what? To like children, the narcissistic fuel, they have to keep going on to get it done. They want to argue. And of course. Be, yeah. And there's two ways to turn a narcissistic child into a psychopath. Right. Either no love or too much love. Right. So you'll get it, but oh, but you know, the, the yeah. overprotectiveness, you will, mm. you will enhance a narcissistic tendency. Yeah. Or you crush them and you belittle them and you destroy yeah. them and you you create a psychopath yeah, yeah. and you will and once that's happened boom yeah. you know that's it gone you know and and yeah. it's it's just shocking crime so I started looking into the the satanic stuff purely because so many people started coming forward yeah and then I realised that this is a very very dark and dangerous world so with that jigsaw puzzle all of a sudden I started understanding why I was threatened you have no idea who you're dealing with yeah. And I started thinking, I now know who and what I'm dealing with. Right. And then the survivors. So it was the first time you realised. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was yeah. like that eureka moment. Wolf. Yeah. My God, yeah. I got this now. Epiphany. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of rewards. And this yeah. satanic ritual abuse is ancient, Brian. It yeah. goes back. Yeah. This is predates Christianity. Yeah. You know, and the Bible's warned thousands us about thousands, this. Thousands, yeah. Years, yeah. You know, and it, it's our worship. They worship Moloch. They worship Lucifer. They worship Satan. And, and it's about the destruction of the child because mm. Jesus loved the child, so they've got to destroy yeah. the child. And everything they do is about well, child destruction. Destroy the child, the turn at these type of people, pedophiles yeah. and psychopaths and lunatics, and they, then they're going to destroy other people, don't they? And, and of course, this is the ultimate organised this is the criminality. Devil, it? It's the devil, it is. Yeah, it's the devil. Ultimate cor- yeah. And what I do, if we can get um, a little rag in a minute, is there a little bit of oh, that cleaning cloth or a rag? And I'll clean this, and, and, and I want to go through. How? Um, oh, look, you're thinking one step ahead of me. <laughs> there we are. Yeah. Our wife's always well, there. Oh, I know that. Yeah, <laughs> straight on it. Right, I'll just try and get as much yeah. as yeah. um, And what, what I want to say, right. right, years ago, there was a thing called the Rains List got produced, Brian, right. and, and it's R A I N S. It's an acronym Ritual Abuse Information Network Support. This is a proper thing, yes. A proper document that come right. out. Yeah. It's about 15 Where's pages. Where's from? Has it come from, please? Yeah. No, it, this came from uh, a lead psychoanalyst, psychologist and psychiatrist. Right. Uh, um, the Maudsley Hospital, which is the lead hospital for mental health in London. Right. Uh, is next to King's College Hospital in South London. And she started... So it's uh, a proper, proper doctor. Proper, proper she's person, a doctor. Yeah, she's yeah. an expert in her field. Yeah. yeah. And she started looking at people coming with multiple personalities that have been sexually abused. Right. And 
she realised that there was a common denominator that why did they have this split personality yeah you know hundreds sometimes you know yeah um, why did they do this why, why have they they keep saying the same things what they kept saying was ritualistic abuse right you know from very early age they are taken and, and these, these are the things that these these Satanists make them do they um, take their version of Holy Communion which is made out of, of feces urine yeah. menstrual blood uh, you know and, and, and ejaculate and stuff like yeah. that and then they will make this and, and they'll give them that um, uh, sodomy in children so anal rape in children yeah. um, gang rape on children um, bloodletting on, on babies so babies are, are sacrificed it's like to drink the blood or drink the, just to, to drink yeah. the blood yeah. 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 to drink yeah. the blood um, there's been many books um, there's been many documentaries on this yes. there's one called Dances with the Devil by Audrey Harper she was a former street prostitute and yeah. just a bit before I started working in that scene yeah. and so much what she says crosses over with so much yeah. you know. Um, it's what all fits, doesn't it? All yeah, fits yeah. together. But also, what, what started happening was people and places were mentioned. Right, so he was in a new forest in the south right. of England. Uh, certain locations kept being mentioned. So the same names and names. the same places kept coming up when yeah. you getting interviewed. So yeah. she would only put a name on there if two or more, so three people yeah, no, you named from, yeah, it, right? Yeah, yeah. So she was confident then, legally, that this name can then be disclosed. Yeah. yeah. And I implore anyone put Rains list R A I N S satanic list. It will come up. There's politicians. There's my old boss um, from when I was on the vice unit. Yeah, yeah. He's in there, yeah. right? That might explain quite a bit. There's um, two chief constables from Hampshire. You know, and a chief constable, an assistant chief constable from Hampshire Police. Yeah. Um, there's doctors. There's actors. You know, and and of course, people like Jimmy Savile are mentioned on it. Ted Heath. Yeah. And of course, yeah. we then had our head of our, our 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 premier. You know, our prime minister is yeah. on there. Yeah. Right. So all these names are on yeah. there. Now I started then doing more and more looking into this. So, yeah. and of course, the same politicians would be mentioned to me. So yeah. people were coming forward, and the same locations were coming up, yeah. time and time again. Now we got six hundred and forty-three politicians. Why do we keep hearing the same? five coming up yes yeah, so. then there's government inquiries that have occurred post Jimmy Savile thing you know we heard about Elm Guest House we've seen Jimmy yeah, Savile yeah. doing many documentaries where he's gone into hospitals and the nurses have told and they've been sacked so he had that much money he had Prince Charles and Diana yeah. Margaret Thatcher her husband Dennis Thatcher behind him he was just fireproof wasn't he because yeah. MI5 would step in and tell well, the police they don't do the jobs well, well, you know that better than me well, well this is interesting Brian yeah. because journalists the media agencies that started speaking out yeah they started getting served things called dean notices and they're like people have heard of a dean notice like oh we had a dean notice served on the daily mirror or the daily whatever you know but what actually is a dean notice a dean notice is a defense notice right. it was a tool by the military intelligence services yeah so we've got the civilian police and then we've got the military they're, they're not interchangeable we don't yeah, have yeah. the military police our streets. They're not allowed by our constitution. They're not allowed to be right, there. They, right. they can't go doing it. Um, so what the hell are the military intelligence services doing? Right. Serving defence notices on journalists yeah. who are exposing people raping children. Right. And then you realise, well, what are the military intelligence for? They're, they're there to protect the economic yeah. stability of the country, of the, country yeah. the, the health stability of the country, the financial stability. So anyone who starts interfering with that the military their job tell, they come in yeah, yeah so why would you be doing Bad. this yeah yeah so they come in you think well what is there what what politically could destabilize this well if you've got a politician, politician yeah who, who's raping a kid but also is yeah. a satanist well yeah. you know and then it makes you think about yeah. spies yeah were these spies really selling military secrets or were they actually selling secrets about politicians raping kids yeah and yeah. i think the latter is more the truth right yeah. Do you know what i mean yeah and then when we look at who was the head you know, um, I mean, this came in in the First World War, but subsequently we had the head of MI6, I think Sir Peter Heyman. Right. He's a paedophile. Yeah. So he's head of MI6. So he's, he's, he's the second powerful. The MI6 is the powerful, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, what we can get in the country higher than any military or anything. Like James, James Bond, aren't yeah, James Bond, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, overseas military intelligence, yeah. the head of it. It's a paedophile. Licensed to be a yeah. paedophile. And then, and then, licensed to fiddle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's terrific, isn't it? When you think of I it, mean, people think we've lost old bounds here. Some of them yeah. up there, 
we told the truth. Well, well, I mean, and when you start then looking, and every um, prime minister and every politician has a political advisor. Yeah. And we look at the last five um, prime ministers we've had; their, their political advisors have been involved in paedophilia. Yeah. One of them, I think his name was Patrick Rock. Um, he might have been Tony Blair's, um, or he might have been Cameron's political advisor. I'm not sure which one. But he was put in charge of internet security. He was found with a load of child porn images on his computer. Yeah. I mean, nothing happens to them, does it? No, nothing happens to them. No. It's all bushed under the carpet. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, Johnny uh, Rotten on the like the Sex Pistols. Yeah, he, he said out, didn't he? he spoke out. He yeah. was banned off the telly for years, wasn't he, because of it? Shocking. You know. So, so this is how all of a sudden we've got this political world is having influence now over yeah. the police. And then if we look at, there's one politician, and again, I won't name him, but he was the youngest ever promoted um, Home Secretary. And he's been investigated numerous times for involvement with sex with young children. Yeah. So Home Secretary is in charge of crime and disorder. You know, it's, it's, they own the prisons, they own the police, yeah. everything. They're in charge of everything. It's funny how they only come, they only get caught out when they die. Yeah, possibly. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they only yeah. get caught. Yeah, yeah, guilt yeah. until yeah, proof guilt yeah. until dead or something so like Jimmy that. Jimmy Savile so, yeah. can't be yeah, taken yeah. off because once you give him that, yeah. sir, no matter what he's done, it gets on there. So. But everyone knew about yeah. it. Yeah, of course they did. But, yeah, but if anyone Esther spoke Ranson out, and all them spoke out yeah. like that, and they, they were rubbish. Yeah. yeah, but the entertainment industry was seeing it being exposed. It's all what about it is. money, wasn't it? Because yeah. he was making that much money with these marathons and mm, all yeah. other stuff. It's all about money, and it's all this. Yeah. What I want to come on to is again. There were so many gaps, but these gaps are being filled. And yeah. with the SRA thing, it's getting people to, are we rolling? Yeah, yeah it's yeah, getting well, people yeah. to, to understand it because it's still yeah. classed as a myth. Mm, yeah, it, yeah, of course. But it isn't. No, it isn't. I mean, we've got now um, researchers getting freedom of information requests from all police forces around the country. I think it's 40 of them. We're getting some horrific results coming back, yeah. you know, which yeah. have never been published. Yeah. Um, but. A woman got in touch with me, she's a victim of satanic ritual abuse. A lot of them have what's called DID. So what they do is, they, they don't just rape the children. Right. I mean, they're perverts and they like having sex with children, okay? But that's not the end of it. The children have many uses, so they are used for coercive control, so they are used to, to be put out to other clients right. for blackmail value. Right. But also, they like to torture the children. They get that uh, pleasure I, I, in this. Uh, they, they kill them and kill then bring them, yeah. them back to life. Is that yeah, true? yeah, they take them to the point of death yeah. and then they revive them. That's and there was a famous politician, again, I can't name him, yeah. that was his thing to, to, to sodomise a young boy and strangle him. And then, just, but he'd become an expert in, in mouth to mouth because he oh, knew how right. to bring a boy yeah, back. Yeah. And these are people that, that are claiming peerages. And these are you people know, who are supposed to be looking after us. You're looking after yeah. us and, yeah. and telling us what to yeah. do. Yeah. And they're the ones that are sending people away for non-payment of council tax. Yeah, I've been there. Or you've been speeding, you're a criminal, or, yeah. or whatever. Somebody's stealing a loaf of bread because they're hungry. Yeah. Going to jail, and these people are supposed to run the country and run not us. I just turn the blind eye to what's going on. But, and being paedophiles themselves. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, it's just appalling. And and you're sitting there thinking, well, why is no one talking out? Well, because they're in on it. Of course. You know, but also the children are used to the blackmail. But they have to make sure the kid never speaks out. So they're right. they're tortured. And what happens when you torture someone? You you, you shatter them on. They yeah, break yeah, them. Yeah, you break them. Yeah. But they'll they'll drown them. So right. drowning's a big thing. Then revive them. Then they electrocute them. Um, like water, like water bottom type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Or, or they will literally drown them in a the bath. Right, right. They'll electrocute them. They will beat them. They will whip them. They will gang rape them. And then what happens? The child that mind has to Just then hide. Them. Yeah, yeah. Fracture one. Yeah. So that they'll have. Um, is that what they come on to split personalities? Split personalities, yeah. They pretend to be Tommy instead of Jack. Yeah. Because Tommy's never been hurt and Jack has been yeah. hurt. Yeah, but, but it, get, it gets yeah. more childish than that. Yeah. yeah. Because there was one woman, she said one of her personalities was called Panda. Mm. And I'm like, oh, Panda. Well, it turns out Panda, when she would be beaten, all she ever wanted to save her was like a doorman, a big guy in a black yeah. and white suit. So Because he would stand her in black and white. So yeah. whenever she was beaten, Panda would come forward and protect her, oh. you know. And uh, th th there's another one that she's got, um, like Sparky, because they would electrocute her. But then Sparky would come and, and he'd deal with electricity. Right. But when when you start blending their so personality, childish, childlike childish, things, because it's childish, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and they've still yeah. got that when they're older. Yeah, yeah. And, and they're also they're all programmed. That if they speak out, you die. So uh, they'll yeah. there'll be one bit in it that as soon as they speak out, suicide comes in. Right, so I'll get suicidal. So it's like triggering it off in the yeah, end. Yeah, 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 you know. 
and I'm hearing story after story. But one of the things also, a groomed child is, is a valuable commodity. Right. So a groomed child will survive. Yeah. Because they're already sexualized. Do you think groomed childs become paedophiles as well? Um, or not? N- no. On, not. Right. Um, all, I would say most paedophiles have been abused. Yeah, but most people haven't been abused, don't become paedophiles. There's a, there's a greater propensity in yeah. that community. Yeah, um, I think it's one in ten or something. Yeah. You know, there has been research in it, but yeah. it's highly inaccurate to say those that have been abused. Would you say what's the differences in the satanic one? Are they? Uh, yeah, all, all all satanic all satanists have been abused. Is right, what said all me. they've all yeah. come all from them, abused yeah. backgrounds. Yeah. You know, and. Um, but I mean, every, what was the terminology? What they think? What do they get out of it when they've been abused? Do they try to get back? Well, well, does well, well, it just like say you see what your mum does and your dad does, and my dad's a builder, I'll be a builder. But, yeah, yeah, but, but there'll be bonuses for it, right. so you'll be progressed. So a policeman will get. And I want to explain the hierarchy in a minute, and right, there'll be yeah, financial incentive. Up, yeah, yeah. You know, they'll you know they will benefit. They will get yes. contracts. They all this and all right. that. You know, I mean, in my team. Most of my team have come from abused backgrounds. Right. Uh, there, there is more and more of them joining now that have come from satanically, ritually abused backgrounds. Um, and some and are helping you. Yeah, yeah. yeah some yeah. have got multiple personalities. One girl, she's got about a hundred personalities, and and it, it's it's just horrible. It's sad, yeah, you know what they've done. I, I mean, and, and they've been normal people who have been driven to this. Oh, yeah. it's it's awful. And when they tell you. It and, and it, oh, it, yeah. it does! It breaks yeah. your heart, yeah. and and you see what they've done to them. But they want it I to stop. I can see it where you tell yeah, me. Yeah. It really affected, they they yeah. want it to stop, and then it's affected me. No, oh, and but imagine you. doing that. I yeah. mean, someone said, and you you said to me earlier, "Have I not been frightened or fear for my life?" Well, one of the politicians, he was the minister for police and crime, right? And um, when it all started going crazy for me, he stood up in in Parliament uh, with the Home Secretary and um, the Home Secretary's office uh, team and turned around and it was started talking about the ritual abuse and all that. He said, this yeah. is real, we've all known about this. So this is in Parliament? Yeah, in Parliament, right. so we've known about this. And he said, had I not stood by him, John Major wouldn't be here now. Oh, wow. That's and I went, well, what, what do you mean by that? He said, you know exactly what I mean. That's brilliant. I said, would well, I have done it? He said, you'd yeah. have been gone, man, you'd have been gone. So, so in other words, he saved you from yeah, being yeah, yeah, killed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They would have wiped you yeah, out. Yeah, or yeah, gone. probably injected you or something. Yeah, oh, you're whatever, not run you yeah. over, yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah. It, you know, Gas whatever, whatever they do. Or whatever, yeah. whatever they do. And, and yeah. they've got the capabilities to do it, you know. And and I, I said to him, well, who do they use? And he went, you know, a lot of ex-military guys will be used. Yeah. But it will be purely business. And and funny enough, a guy come to see me and he'd served in, I think, the Royal Green Jackets and he'd gone on to, to, to go on to one of the specialist units. Yeah. And he ended up doing private contracting, but he would do government contracts as well. He yeah. said, I, I've done one in Ireland. Yeah. I'll never do one in the UK. There are some people that will, but on the whole, I won't. So I've done them in Hong Kong. And what's this for? Like killing something? Killing people, yeah. Yeah. And then, like contracting. Yeah. About the way, because they're all the same, something, yeah, something yeah. that doesn't want to be said. And yeah. he said they would get, they'd get a Belgium, a French, or, or an East European guy would be brought over. And um, and I said, well, and funny enough, I spoke to a girl that was in MI6, and she said, yeah, they, you know, I yeah. would sometimes help working out the contracts of people that they would do to contracts. Oh. So she said, it, it, murdering people. And she's a whistleblower for yeah. MI6, yeah. you know. Wow. And and I said, well, what would, you, what would you do? And he said, well, you get a, like a little short arm, little little side arm, with a bottle of water. You just cut it so it fits in the water. And he said, and I walk past, you making out and drinking, and bang, and fire through the water, and it would be yeah, a silencer. Yeah, yeah, to the silencer. Wow. Bang, and you'll just and see. By the time he's yeah, you'll just go down. Yeah, yeah, gone. Yeah, he said, yeah. just yeah. go straight by it. Bang, and, yeah. and that'd be gone. Get on the motorbike and gone. He said, yeah. be easy as that, you know. So he'd say that, but um. I, it, it does go right to the heart of government yeah. and when I was threatened with you no idea who you're dealing yeah. with what well, I know now I know but now only the government can change the law yeah. that's the only thing so yeah. we have to be the voice we are the voice of the government so we have to get up there and get them to change but, what's going on but, if we don't stand up they're not going to do it Brian the devil loves the silence you of course know? he would and, and I, he I just say to people speak out now this isn't all about satanic ritual abuse no. Well, we are bringing all the survivor groups together. We want them all to come forward. Fantastic. And everyone might together. Yeah. Well, what I want to do is just show you the hierarchy yeah, yeah. of how these people work so we've got a full overview. Yeah, so we know. You know, and, and that's I mean, I never knew my life. A bit like, you know, your journey through life. Yeah, you never knew yeah. you'd end up saying it. No, 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 no,
I think you're having a joke, aren't you? <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, it's, it's for the cause what you're doing. Uh, save, yeah. save our children. Yeah. It, it, it's fantastic what you're doing. I, I, I commend you, like I say. You should be given the medal for what you're doing, mate. And, uh, I, I, mean, I think you're doing fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. Well, what I'll do, Brian, if I... I'm just going to use this, excuse it, this bit, right? So that's not there, but we're going to use these, right? And this is yeah. like the pyramid of power. So this is the woman said to me, you need to take this down. Yeah. Uh, this has been uh, corroborated and verified by survivors. And she said, before it's too late, the world needs to know how right. the satanic thing works. She said, it's ancient. Yeah. It's ancient in ritual. This, is this goes back thousands of years. Thousands of years. Yeah, of years. Yeah, Babylonian, yeah. Sumerian. Before and, Jesus yeah, and yeah, before yeah. Jesus was even there. And it's what Jesus warned us about. That's why Jesus back. has come to of warn us, yeah. He's had enough of it. Yeah. So he said, right at the bottom, you've got what's known as spotters. Right. Right, so these spotters, right, they, here we go, she's showing right at the bottom spotters. Here we go, right. So they, these spotters, what they do is this girl was a spotter. She said, I would uh, be taken, she said, Elm Guest House, which was something to come out in the press. Mm. A little while about about children's home down in southwest london where mps would go in for sex with children nice. she said so a, a boy or a girl would be brought in there would be a customer there maybe high up maybe someone from abroad someone wealthy or maybe a politician yeah she said and there'd be a group of us we, we've all been abused but we're also spotters so we will be put out in windows opposite in windows in the building in the garden like they're doing in, in Holland and Germany, yeah, yeah, like yeah. the Red Lake District. Yeah, but also like they might do in like the favelas of Brazil when they have the little yeah. lads with them yeah. when the police come in. And, right, oh, I'll see, I see you yeah, yeah. yeah, So they would be put out there to spot us and their job would be keep, to keep an eye out. To, yeah, yeah. To, keep, yeah, to yeah. do alert whoever's yeah, yeah. coming, yeah. But also their job is to identify other victims. Yeah. Right? Um, so they know other kids that come from bad backgrounds or, or vulnerable families. So they can be used as yeah. Well. yeah, and they would then report to this next group, right? This next group are called the Lookers. Now the Lookers, I'm going to show that to camera. Now the Lookers, um, they do, they do the more research. They would then proactively go out and they would find victims right. based on intelligence from the spotters. They would then go to whatever any community. So it could be any. It doesn't necessarily have to be the lower working class communities where there is a lot more dysfunctionality, yeah. overt dysfunctionality. The middle class, you know, they, they, there's a lot of swinging going yeah. on and yeah. wire swapping yeah. Yeah. that was synonymous, yeah. wasn't it, yeah. years ago yeah. with, with this community. Yeah. That's right. And and of course that that causes a sexual liberalisation, and and then of course you're going to get the perverts wink all their way in. Mm. I've spoken to to the son of of a famous lord. And his dad, he was just his dad was raping him and, and raping others and mm. having orgies in the house. So it's going on. Yeah. So they're going to identify a weakness because what they've got to do, those at the top need feeding. So these right. at the bottom are looking for yeah, yeah, like yeah. sharks, predators all yeah, the yeah, time. Yeah. They are they are they are going up and down. A day, seven days a week. Yeah, yeah that yeah, is their yeah, job. Yeah, to like, identify like sharks. Yeah, right. And then after that, now this is going to interest people. After that they make way to this next group and they're called the fixers right so the fixers then have access to intelligence and they they are able to procure the children so that could be an abduction and yeah. we do see abductions go on with children you know we saw it with roy whiten who abducted sarah payne where ian huntley it does yeah and it makes you wonder whether or not there's more to this child abduction than yeah. just you know yeah so a groomed kid is better because a groom kid and a groom, back and yeah, keep an abducted kid dies, yes. yeah. and that's that. Oh, is that right? Once oh, they're abducted, they're, that's oh. it, they're gone. So that's what I was told. Fixers are in two groups, one, two, and three, according to their level. The upper class fixers, middle class. Oh, that's bad. They will procure the children, so they can do it via the social services or anywhere, putting in the care in the kids' home. And they know this is they, they, never yeah, coming back. These very, fixers. very connected people. And who was told to me as being a high level fixer? A man called James Savile, yeah, right? right? And what was his program called? Yeah, yeah. Jim yeah. will fix it. And Jim, was, Jim yeah. will fix it. It was taking the the pee out of it. Of course, it was. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, yeah. I was Symbolic. sitting there deliberately. Yeah, doing yeah. Doing Jim it. will fix it. He was. Yeah. A, they're procurers, yes. right? So, so all of a sudden, from identifying, looking out, helping, you know, intelligence yeah. and all that. They've now procuring the children, you know, and they will make sure. Because they would go and get kids, wouldn't they? Take six or seven out of yeah, Rolls Royce yeah. and things, and they go. And then they're taken back again. Yeah. And of course, kids are drugged as well. They don't know yeah. what's gone on. You know, it's. 
unbelievable what's gone on, you know, and some are frightened. And yeah. I mean, one girl said she was taken um, to a party, so six years old. She's already been abused at home. Yeah. Her mother's very middle class. She said, I go there, this man gives me a drink. He's, and she's, I think she's in her 50s now. So it was Jimmy Savile. Yeah. He gave me a drink of champagne in an old sort of thing. Yeah. So there was a little boy called Matthew next to me who'd come from a kid's home and we were yeah. talking together. And they gave me a drink. And she said, next thing she said, I wake up. And I wake up, we're in this, um, like a shed area outside. And Matthew's next to me and he's dead. Uh, he's dead yeah. and Jimmy Savile brought Matthew in yeah you know so you know and, and the people look, it's not just Jimmy Savile look who protected him yeah right and, and then of course well. yeah. from here we go we move to another level now right and we move to this level and this, this shows a hierarchy it's like how the Mafia work you know the cleaners oh. right the cleaners now they don't just clean up the scene they will forensically clean up the scene. Get rid of the bodies and everything. They will get rid of the bodies, but they will also right now. Bear in mind what it said to me. People were saying that they've been taken to uh, police stations, and this has occurred. I've heard two accounts from from police accommodation buildings. I've heard it from British Legion buildings, from pubs, from Salvation Army building, military bases. You know, we hear it all the time, right? So the cleaner is the organizer, right? So cleaner then needs to know that if say they're holding it in a working man's club a yeah. ritual yeah. there are kids not just to rape children we're talking now about ritual ritualistic abuse it's killing them as well right? yeah. they've got to make sure that the central station alarm doesn't go off they've got to make right. sure that residence parking isn't violated so people knock so on the building saying, like military isn't it everything yeah. they are so strategic yeah. yeah but the other thing is that there is no DNA left behind or DNA is left behind so I'm here now and I blow my nose on that yeah. and I'm like that's my DNA. That can be put in a crime scene. Yeah, yeah. I am now on a crime scene. Yeah. That could be taken. Yeah. You know. Then go on your dustbin. Can't they can. And something and, I mean, yeah. I mean, you could even, you know, if you was a burglar, you'd watch someone throw a fag down, you know, yeah. go and pick up with tweezers. You could leave that. Yeah, outside something. somebody's house was yeah. being killed or whatever, and they get the blood. An and apple. Yeah. yeah. A bit of an apple. Yeah. yeah. It can be pushed through a letterbox. You can open a letterbox and chuck it in there. Yeah. yeah. Someone's on the scene then. So, yeah. you know, so not only can they get rid of DNA, you know, they can produce it, you know. And that's that. So the cleaners are very. And what I said. They must be really intelligent. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that they have got police officers working yeah, in there. Yeah. Again, so they've got backup. Haven't they? they have yeah, got. Yeah. They've got. They've got their little gang. And that's yeah. not saying everyone is. No, this no, this is an that. elite club here. Yeah. I mean, we're going about masonry. This is masonry and some. You know, this yeah, is just yeah. taking this to such an extreme level. Yeah. Southern you level. Know, like. Oh yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> but they'd say that these cleaners will be. Uh, regional, so they'll have yeah. one for the northeast, one for the south. So they have one, one in every every area. Yeah, yeah, they said they're split. It's into five areas, and they'll be called in, and they will coordinate, make sure it all goes. So they all do. Do they only use one, or sometimes do they use a couple at a time? Well, well, they go. It depends on how big the, the, the big, thing the big, is. The big ritual is right. So, yeah. so what then? I was told. Yeah. Again, we go to this level now. International fixers. Right. I was told that Jeffrey Epstein's one of them. And I was told about a few more celebrities, and they will have access to boats and planes so kids can be just free from anywhere. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and this year and hours instead of years type of thing. Yeah. This goes links yeah. in now with yeah. what we're seeing in America with the Pizza Gate. Yeah. When there is this traffic of kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and one girl she said that I've been in a crate, but they would drug yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. So you, I mean they drug shy horses. Like they're making films about now anywhere yeah, here. Yeah. Send them into. Egypt or whatever, or yep. Arabs are getting them and things like that. I'm not saying they all do it, but you see these films where they're getting taken, never seen again. You can be anaesthetized, yeah, and then you can wake up and you could be in Portugal, you yeah, know, and think, yeah. oh, did I get here? Yeah, you know, and that's that. So the international fixes. It really is, is happening, isn't it? Yeah, of course really it is, bad. yeah. Wow. And then the next group is this group, and they're called the Bloods. They just turned the Bloods, and these are people very high up in, in prominent positions. They could be bloodline families they could be big busy, whatever we're taking talking real at the top mm -hmm. um and above them is this next group and i'm going to deal with these two together and and it's called the royals they term the royals and again we're not pointing any finger at anyone but yeah. i was told it is what it is yeah right, it is what it is and again i'm not making any allegations on a, yeah. on a, on a, a liabilistic front and, and and i said well what is it she said because they, they do many things there is the sex with children yeah um 
there is also you know the perversion needs to because we've seen that now with epstein they've been sex with children and all that yeah. but they need the blood yeah, yeah. Just all, 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 all the survivors that have spoken what to you me mean the blood the blood and there's drinking blood yeah they're, yeah. they're separate they, it's yeah. just the names of the family the yeah, bloodline yeah. family yeah, yeah you know um the but royals need they they blood. need the blood they need the survived blood. everything in their heads yeah and, and what they do i mean i've had survivors speak to me from all over the uk ireland as yeah. well and when they look kids they're used to kill the babies now the babies will come from um they could be drug addicts that sold yeah. their babies they yeah. could be their own Bob breeders maybe. Yeah. yeah their own people that they get yeah. pregnant yeah one girl she said i've got one son but i've given birth to five children yeah and she said one one girl told me that they got like a a, a letter opener and they they gaffer taped it around the hand and she had to insert into a little baby's um, vagina and kill yeah. the baby. Yeah. She yeah. told me about, she's also bitten the baby's heart. Jesus. And she said, and I said, well, what are they doing? She said, they're wailing, they're laughing. And they would have special cages. I said, what, I'm just asking, I'm sorry to stop you. What is there a special thing that happens to someone when they're frightened? Yes, whether the adrenochrome. Adrenochrome, adrenochrome. adrenochrome. Yeah, adrenochrome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's an on vogue name what, now. What, what is that supposed to but, do? But, well, it, uh, the, this girl said they cut a little boy open and his heart was still beating. She said, and my job, I had to bite it. She have bit it and he died. And she said, this wave went over him and they caked the blood. And she said, they were like high. You like, know? On, like on a like on track or something. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, love, yeah. She said, if they don't get it, they suffer. They suffer. So there is a need to feed this pyramid constantly. It constantly needs feeding. Well, this pyramid needs collapsing. Yeah, 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 yeah. well it does, yeah, you know. Yeah. And, and so that, that's, I mean, that was, that was told to me by a victim and survivor. Um, this is a woman who's actually gone to the police. The police have had this information. It's been corroborated by other victims and survivors. And I say to all of them coming at the police, you need to tell them. Can anyone do that to a baby? And these investigations are always shut down. <clears throat> always shut down. They've never ever resulted in anyone from this level. How many, mm -hmm. like how many people have come forward saying that? Um, I, I've had about ten people say that's bang on. That's absolutely bang on. I spoke to, I would say, about twenty um, survivors of abuse um, that that have killed babies, and they've told the police. They have actually told and the police. All in the same way. Yeah, yeah, yeah stabbing yeah, them the and, and the hearts the and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Or stabbing well, them, these, these, these I mean, I mean one down. one girl told me, um, and she's now, I uh, think she helps people now. And she said, um, they made me cut the baby's throat and I didn't want to cut this baby's throat. It was about four months old and it was moving about, so I did it wrong. So what they did was they made her do it again and as punishment, they inserted a boiling, a, a red hot poker into this little girl's anus. Right. You know, and but this- the dress up and- Yeah, they, yeah, dressing they, up, yeah. Devil worship, yeah, yeah thing, and yeah. wear masks and uh, survivors- so they can't see who the answer Can't see them, yeah, yeah they right. will be masked. Uh, they will wear animal masks so, so sometimes. So what do they use? Are these like, um, like the these at the bottom, they're the ones they use at the, the top to bite their blood and yeah, yeah. Um, and well, well, they'll use the kids as well. So yeah, so they will have their own children. So a spotter might be a little kid, but yeah. then the kids will have have their, their life expectancy. They yeah. they know that they're broken. Yeah. They know they're damaged. They end up with mental health problems. Yeah. No one's going to believe them. No, absolutely, no one's no. going to believe them. They've got. Um, DID, they've got probably, memory, probably memory drugs loss. And yeah, probably and they, on drugs themselves. And, and they've total memory loss, yeah, you know? Yeah, and yeah. It, but these memories start coming up yeah. when they get into their middle age, all of a sudden yeah. they start remembering yeah. stuff. So yeah. it's it's difficult to believe. It's horrible, isn't it? But there, there, there have been many, many state cases of this. There's been, I think, 12 prosecutions throughout the UK for, for um, uh, violence and murders involving Satanism. Yeah. Yeah. But the UK won't recognise it as. It's a bit like assault and racially aggravated assault. Yeah. It's still assault, but it's got an add-on. Yeah. They won't accept it. As, as satanic. No, um, America does. Well, like can't they? Because like you say, America does. Yeah, yeah. So and, but here they, they, they won't do it. They, they belittle it and, and they cover it up. Yeah. So it's, yeah. I mean, and ultimately this is where life has taken me down this line. And so these people are just getting a bit of murder. They are, you. literally. And just filtered out. Yeah. And the healing can begin. Yeah. And one of the things here, Brian, and, and you, you might allude to this, you know, from 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 the pain of confinement and everything else, you need justice. Of course you do. You know? So you need to just, just to move on. Yeah. You have to have, um, you have to see these people, they must be, they should be put, up, put away for life, they should never get out, do it once and keep them in jail forever. Yeah. They should bring you along yeah. all together because uh, 
It's made me turn my stomach a bit today. No, no, no. And and it's, 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 made a, it's me a and, and I'm a Christian and it's. I'm but you can understand now the need for child pornography with these people yeah, yeah, and, and the need to sexualise kids and all, all that. rubbish that I was just looking at was an accident. I was just being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rubbish, bullshit. They're doing yeah. it. Sorry for swearing. They're doing it because the, the, the paedophiles. Yeah. So but, but, you know, prior to this interview, we, we were discussing as a collective group about what has come out. And the pizza gate in America yeah, has come yeah. out, um, and hopefully, you know, we can have a, another chat another time about the in-depth nature yeah, of this. Yeah, and I know yeah. we've got a girl called Nikki who does a lot of it. Yeah. But that has come out. Yeah. You know, and all of a That's sudden, a great thing in it in a way. Yeah. It's, it proves what you're doing is right, and what you're doing is true. Yeah. Proof. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, we we've had um, people mention priests. Yeah. you know um, yeah. cardinals and bishops. You know, and there has gone on. I think Bishop uh, Peter Ball was convicted. Um, he was a close friend of Prince Charles. Prince Charles stood up for him, and yeah. he was, you know, one lad died as a result yeah. Yeah. suicide because of what he was doing, and he was yeah. being protected at the highest level. Yeah. And you think, for what? Why? Yeah. You know, if that was me, and you, you know, even in the police, you know, if if one of my kids got arrested for shoplifting, I could lose my job. Yeah. Yet, how comes we've got still people high up in society okay, and that, that, yeah. that have got friends or whatever that are involved? I mean, we've yeah. got even yeah. Prince Andrew was alleged to be involved with well, look Epstein. At that. I, I, I look at that. Buckingham Palace, my mate for me the other week and said, have a look, there's about half a million people shot and paedophile, paedophile. Oh, I was, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I'm not saying yeah. he is, I'm just saying yeah, what the yeah, people yeah, are yeah, saying. Same, yeah. And not one bit of it has been on national no, telly. Not, not one bit. What's all that about? Yeah, yeah. You know, Whereas, how does it, it's, there's the proof, it's yeah. the pudding there. All the time. Brushed under the table. But, but isn't that the sign of the times? I mean, where else would you get people turning up and shouting, paedophile, paedophile, paedophile? Yeah. We had it in the UK. I think the royal family, I I, I can't see how anyone can want to follow no, them now. No, I mean, no, it's I mean, it's, terrific, and our politicians aren't serving us. No. Our chief constables and our commissioners of police no, not are protecting this. Yeah, this. And they're not looking after us. No. They're supposed to, that's what they're there for. Their job is to yeah. look after the public. We pay their, the taxes we yeah. pay, oh, pay for them. Yeah, and we yeah. pay good money to be properly yeah. protected. Yeah. And, and if anyone was to say, well, what would you be priority be? Well, protect our children first. Exactly. You've got to be you know? million and yet they yeah. do the opposite of that. Yeah. You know, and then when you get uh, that, there was one MP, he sued because someone called him a paedophile, but he had a conviction um, of, of sexual assault against a minor. Yeah. And he and he said, no, I want to be re referred to as a minor attractive person, a map. Yeah. And, and and you know, and someone who then said, well, you're a paedophile, they then lost their job, and he got compensation. I mean, what crazy. world are we in? It's crazy. crazy. You know, but I've just want to say to these people out there, these want to go hunting paedophiles. I think it's wrong because what happens is they hunt them, they get them, they scream and shout at them, yeah, and yeah. the paedophile gets off. Yeah. If you do hunt them and find them, phone the police to get them arrested. Yeah. Because if you try to arrest them yeah, yourself and start that. hitting them, they're going to get off of the case, yeah. so you're just making their case stronger. Yeah. So I've watched yeah. quite a few about and, it. And also, if, if they're filming them, you could then end up with a murder. Yeah. You're all going to be liable for that yeah. murder, yeah. and then that will shut any, any more paedophile hunting down. And like oh. Brian said, 100% with you. Yeah. If you do it, do it like a store detective does yeah, it. Exactly. Detain Call them, the have the evidence. You can record your evidence, but don't live stream it. Yeah. There's no and don't say to them, you've done this and you're yeah. a paedophile yeah. and scream yeah. at them because then you make them yeah, realise, you know, so you're bullying them into saying something that even though they have done it, let the police do their job. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And yeah. swallow your pride. Get rid of yeah. the pride. Yeah. You let them do your job. And you've then done I a great thing by finding them and yeah. having them arrested. Then yeah. you're going to spoil it because I've seen loads to get off with it because they've threatened them. Yeah, you know, and they've punched them or whatever, and mm -hmm. they've ended up in jail themselves. So it's not not worth it. But hasn't it come to something? Then we have to rely on vigilantism. Uh, yeah, our own people. Yeah, yeah. the people on the street shouldn't have to do with it. The yeah. police should be doing it. You know, yeah. actively doing it. And and then you see what, what we're getting. And I want to put this out now. And we've got this this phenomenal change in our times. When people are being drawn together like never before, mm. you know that, that I am sitting breaking bread with Brian, with Big Chris Lambiano, yeah. and and we, it was Terry Ellis, Stephen Fred, all coming together, and, and survivor groups coming together, all of us, of course, of course. and we are going to be trying to take the government, not take them on in 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 a sort of a revolution Rebellion, sense, yeah, 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 but yeah, holding Rebellion, them yeah. accountable as a huge collective and with with a lot of experience behind us, and just say if you don't do your jobs in. 
F off, you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. someone else will do your yeah, job. Of course, that's all you want. And we just I say, save the children. Like yeah. John says, this is happening every day of the week. People are getting off with it. And nobody, people are turning a blind eye. You've got to stand up and do the right thing. Do the right thing. That's all and, you've got to do. And people love your children. They're yeah. so precious. Love your children. Yeah. You know, do your best for them. Don't leave them on their own. They're vulnerable. And, yeah. you know, love your children. Yeah. They're the most precious gift. But... I mean, I'm sorry to have hogged everything. No, 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 it's okay. Well, you man, what you've got out there is letting people know what's really going on in this world, and this man is 100%. Like I say, I don't speak to police, but this man, what he's doing is phenomenal, and you've got to follow him and watch what he's doing and help him. And without you guys, this man can't keep doing what he's doing. We need help, don't we? Everyone don't. has to get together, and we all have to help us. In I, mean, I mean, I'm in the North East. Uh, last week I was in I was in uh, with Terry in, in North London and yeah. then I'll be over at somewhere else and I just think what we've got is brilliant I am totally yeah. I, I, am, I am really yeah. blown away by how we've all come together it's fantastic you know yeah, and I, I do it because for me Jesus don't want a kid to he of don't want him out no. Jesus you is know. real <laughs> believe me he is real so get yourself to church um, and listen to this man because he's telling the truth and believe what he's saying so hope this is an eye opener for people Thank you for listening to the I'm Brian Cockrell. This is John Wedger. Thank you so pleasure. much, mate. Thank Absolute you so pleasure. much. Absolute pleasure. God bless everyone. No.